Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015. We'd like to welcome all of our citizens as well as our administra administrators and legislators to these, uh, this morning proceedings. At this time, I'm asking all to please join us in the invocation which will be led by Dr. Ken Johnson of the Road Havers Boys Ranch. And we will have Commissioner Harvey to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please come forward and welcome. I bring you greetings and salutations from the Road Haver Boys Ranch. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer with thankful hearts. You've been good to us here in Putnam County. And while we look at our problems and address them, we acknowledge the blessings you have so enriched us with. We thank you for these commissioners you have placed your hand upon to guide us in local government. Help us to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Give us the sense, Lord, to keep you first in our thought life, our family life, our church life, and in all decisions in our government life. We tremble at the responsibility before us and ask you to help us maintain our integrity while we make difficult decisions. Help the other citizens to support what is right. We ask for harmony when possible and wisdom to get the job done. Our Father, we ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Now we will turn over to our county administrator for a special introduction. Mr. Right. Leary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, new face seated to my right belongs to Mr. Stacy Manning, who assumed his duties and responsibilities as Putnam County Attorney yesterday. Uh, Mr. Manning comes to us with a number of years of experience in county government law as either the Deputy uh, County Attorney or Assistant County Attorney, having previously served in Volusia and most recently in Osceola County. Uh, so we're just happy to have Mr. Manning and we welcome him here to Putnam County. Yes, how about a warm Putnam County welcome? Mr. Leary, tell you that there was a 30-minute speech. I did introduction. not. <laughs> I don't have a 30-minute speech. Right. <laughs> but I will say I just want to say thank you. Um, I, I appreciate um, all of you uh, giving me the opportunity to, uh, to serve, um, serve Putnam County and um, to the citizens of uh, Putnam County. Uh, I just want to uh, let you know that, uh, that uh, I'm here um, to uh, hopefully give you the uh, the best legal advice uh, that I can that I can provide um, to the county, to the commission, to the administrator, and, and to staff. And once again, uh, thank you, and I'm uh, very much looking looking forward to it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so very much. We welcome the Manning family, and uh, thank you for accepting. Okay, look forward to that. Commissioners, each of you should have been provided the September 8, 2015, regular meeting proceedings. It is presented to you for approval. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Second. second. We do have a proper motion with double seconds. Uh, approval of the minutes from September the 8th. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item four is public comment. Um, there are some citizens who, of course, would like to speak uh, concerning a specific item or some specific items. Uh, for the convenience of the general public who are here uh, for the landfill and convenience center fee policy adoption uh, there with the consent of my colleagues, we would like to move that up at this time uh, and include it as a part of public comments, but the specific issue uh, there, and we will continue with public comments, but um, many of our citizens have uh, expressed the concern um, and want us to drill down on what the actual plan is. So I'd like to call with consent of each of you all. I'd like to call Mr. Gass forward. Uh, Mr. Larry Gass, if you will come and um, give us a synopsis of this specific issue. And then we will have, I do not have a lot of cards. We do ask, it is not a mandatory thing, but we do ask citizens that are uh, wanting to speak <coughs> to us to fill out a card for the benefit of us being able to reach back out to you and contact you following the meeting for any potential questions or any clarifications that are necessary. 
uh, there. So if you are planning to speak on this particular issue, uh, please uh, consider filling out a card. Good morning, Mr. Gass. Good morning. Uh, after last year's solid waste assessment increase, which was a very large increase, the Solid Waste Advisory Board was appointed by mayors of the county and you commissioners. Uh, that board went through a lot of different things and made several recommendations. One of those recommendations was to either close the convenience centers because it's a duplication of services or to try to recoup the fees that are or the expenses that are generated by the county servicing those convenience centers. Um, as a result of that, we've looked at our finances for this year and we put in what we think would be an offset, which is about $350,000 is what it costs to run those by collecting fees for personnel using convenience centers and the landfill. What we're looking at is for the landfill and convenience centers for assessed residential disposal, people who have a res an assessed residence, the residents would um, be allowed to bring up to three 35-gallon thir bags of garbage for a $2 disposal fee or a standard pickup truck bed of horticultural trash to the county disposal facilities for a $5 disposal fee. This option is to be used no more than once per week and proof of assessment must be provided for this reduced disposal rate. These residents may also dispose of five car tires per year at no charge and they may also dispose of household hazardous waste and used motor oil at no charge. All customers at the landfill, except for those that are assessed, will be charged $44 per ton for the disposal of waste with a $5 minimum charge. Tires will be charged at $125 per ton. The weight and resulting fee will be determined by the landfill scale. The convenience centers, except for the assessed residence disposal, all customers will be charged by the cubic yard for waste disposal with a $5 minimum charge. The rates will be as follows. Household garbage is $11 per cubic yard. Horticultural trash is $10 per cubic yard. Construction debris is $14 per cubic yard. Tires will be charged at a rate of $1.35 per car tire, $2.70 per truck tire, and $5.40 for off-road tire. Okay. Any other comments? I'm These sure. These fees that look like a, a new charge really aren't because all the citizens are paying for pickup at the curbside. Uh, we did make a change this year in the uh, hauling contract because we only had bulky waste pickup once every two weeks with the yard waste and that is unsightly if you take a sofa out and set it by the curb and it takes two weeks before that sofa gets picked up so all bulky waste is now on a weekly basis in the new uh, garbage hauling contract so that bulky waste will be picked up and uh, taken away with your regular garbage on a weekly basis. Okay. Thank you very kindly. Uh, Mr. Wayne McLean is the first speaker. Behind him, Mr. Marvin Diver. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Wayne McLean. I live at 285 West River Road, Palatka, Florida. I'm here representing myself, not my company, nor my wife. Okay. <laughs> we'll make sure the record um, shows that. Okay. I do want to start off by saying I've had the opportunity to work with uh, Rick Leary and his staff in the past, and I can tell you personally that nobody watches the dollar closer than Mr. Leary and his staff, which uh, I think by now, if you've been a commissioner for a while, you know that. Um, however, I've talked to Mr. Gass um, a couple of times, heard him speak at the chamber, 
And as a longtime citizen of this county, I just think this um, fee has not been well thought out. And let me give you the reasons why quickly. Uh, I lived in a county, Rockingham, North Carolina, uh, specifically Reedsville was a city. I lived in the county when they imposed such a fee. What we saw within a year were couches, refrigerators, washing machines, et cetera, strewn in woods and off the side of the roads. I know currently we may have that in our county, but it quickly increased. I just don't see why the citizens of Putnam County have to pay an additional dollar because it's not a convenience for me to load up my pickup truck and go down to the, to the landfill. I do it to help keep it from being on the side of the road and being in my yard. And yes, we do pick up items that we see along the road and take it to the landfill, me not being the only one. But it seems like the citizens of Putnam County are being punished because citizens of Clay County, Flagler County, and surrounding counties have the opportunity to bring their trash over here to be dumped and not charged. It just seems to me that this is not thought out very well. I asked Mr. Gass yesterday what a standard pickup truck was. Is it a small pickup truck? Is it a half ton pickup truck? Is it three quarters at one ton? What is it? And then I also understand that renters have to show proof that they um, are paying uh, electric bill or that their landlord has paid the solid waste fee. I can tell you that it's gonna be a problem when some of the consumers uh, show up at the landfill to do that. You know, I, I love living here in Putnam County. I choose to live here. My wife and I both love it. We try to be part of the community, but I just see this as a slippery slope that we're going down with this fee is being imposed on our citizens of Putnam County. What we do with citizens outside the county is the commission and the staff's issue, but the citizens of Putnam County I think you will see very quickly that our roadways will become trashier and that um, you will have a number of people that will just forget taking things down to the landfill and will just start throwing it in the woods. And again, I'm not talking against any citizen of Putnam County, but I've seen this happen before. Thank you very much for listening to my comments. Thank you so much, Mr. McLean. Mr. Diver. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, lady. <laughs> uh, we talk about curbside service. It's 210 foot from my house to the curb. Now, I have to haul my garbage down to the curb, as y'all call it, to have it picked up. Uh, I have no problem with that. But my problem is when I have, I live in the country, I have big trees, a lot of limbs, trash, yard waste. I load it on a trailer. I've got to haul it to the to the curb. If I dump it at the curb on the wait a week for them to come pick it up, I'm gonna have a bunch of neighbors on my neck. Me leaving it there. I always have load it up, carry it to the dump, unload it, and come back to the house. No, no problem. I feel like I'm doing the county a favor when I do that. And uh, I just can't see me having to pay them to let me come, excuse me, let me come out there and uh, unload my trailer. Uh, and it's just like this man said, if we go through with this thing, you're going to see a lot more trash and debris along the roadways or in, in, in vacant fields or whatever. Uh, I know a nice place out on Buffalo Bluff Road. It's got a big pasture out there. Probably put quite a few loads in there. <laughs> but uh, Anyway. Uh, I, I sure wish you could find some other way to go with this thing because uh, I, I just will be made my last trip to the garbage dump if I have to start paying to go across them scales. And another thing is, how y'all gonna handle the traffic there? I've been out to the dump and have to wait behind five or six vehicles to get in across the scale. Now, if we gotta wait on somebody to wait to come back out, you just compounding the problem right there. And so uh, I wish y'all would give this thing a whole lot more thought and consideration before y'all start putting more burden on the people that's already paying the uh, waste fees. I thank y'all. Thank you so much, Mr. Tapper. Ms. Catherine Ratliff, is this the issue that you want to speak on? The 
Good morning. Good morning. I'm Katherine Ratliff, and we're new residents here. My husband and I have carried, I would say, 15 to 20 loads, uh, trailer loads of uh, yard brush. We've been clearing our land that we just bought to make it pretty and presentable. That would have been a lot of money if we've had to pay, plus paying taxes on the pickup. Well, we put it on the side before. They don't pick it up. They'll pick up maybe two limbs because their truck isn't big enough. And it really is going to gather up and gather up. Going to look bad. And I want to commend y'all on your lending library. But the grass is growing over the sidewalk where mothers can't walk down there. And it's really sad. And I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Ratliff. Ms. Karen Chadwick. We're speaking on the landfill issues. Are you wanting to talk about that? We're not doing the public comments just yet. Not general comments? Not yet. Okay, um, I did have one comment about the landfill. Okay. Um, well, it has to do with Keep Putting Them Beautiful. They're doing a great job getting everybody to clean up. And um, I live out you know, in the interlocking area and there is some trash out in the woods, but it's not as bad as it has been. And I really do think if you start charging. I can pay the fees. I, I use, you know, I already pay my taxes, put my trash out, and they pick it up. Um, but I have used the drop box. But I think if you start charging, it just how people are. They're going to go dump it in the woods. They do it now, and it's free. So I, I think it would, I understand wanting to raise more money, but I think it would um, cause more problems with trash being put out in the woods. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Chad. We'll call you back for the other issues in a moment. Mr. Robert Bly, you're next, sir. Good morning, Good Robert morning. Bly, <clears throat> 116 Sand Lake, Pomona Park, Florida. I just have one question about this. Why is the new fee for the landfill not being voted on by the Solid Waste District? Why is the new fee? Yes, why is this going through the Board of County Commissioners when it uh, should be part of the Solid Waste District? The Putnam County owns the landfill, sir. Not the solid waste district does not own the landfill. Okay, but I thought the district was uh, supposed to be involved with changes that were made to policies that had to do with the landfill. Mr. Leary. Mr. Chair. Yep. Mr. I think Mr. Kessler can have yeah, the This is, issue came up last week, Mr. Chairman, right before the workshop. Uh, Mr. Harvey actually raised it with me a few moments before the workshop. Um, since that workshop, I have reread and reread the various ordinances, and there is an argument that could be made that it should be the district. Uh, my best reading of the ordinances, and again, I'm not taking away, it's not a slam dunk issue uh, a decision either way. My best reading is that the solid waste district sets the assessment for curbside collection and that the county is the one that is authorized to operate the land, that owns a landfill, operates on a day-to-day -day basis and is entitled to charge fee. There's an ordinance that specifically says it's the county that sets fees and charges for use of the landfill facilities other than assessments which are reserved to the uh, solid waste district. So I, I think it's a, it's not a clear cut issue. My best uh, opinion is that it's a county decision. Thank you, Council. Yes, sir. The assessments, that last sentence, the assessments are up to the district. And the way I read that is that this would be an assessment. So that's why no, I, it's no. not an assessment. It's a fee, sir. It's a user fee. Okay. Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I did talk to council about this, and I have raised that issue. Um, we did change the resolution this year to include words like up to, <coughs> and I do feel like the solid waste district, if you pulled them, would not be thinking that we, we were going to charge our residents to, to put stuff at our landfill based on that meeting. So I do have concerns that we should be sending this back to the Solid Waste Committee, but, um, and I have expressed that to our attorney. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ken Schwing, you're the next speaker. As 
as Wayne said earlier, the problem you're going to have is the future. People wanting to dispose of their trash, if they're going to have to pay going to the dump, they're going to not pay putting it on my property, Walt's property, or if you have any property, they'll just dump it at the most convenient place. It may not be in public view as much because they're going to try to hide dumping it. But I own numerous rental properties that we keep cleaned up. Now, we have the option of setting all the trash outside at the street or loading it in our dump trailers, carrying it to the dump, and disposing of it. That's the method we have chosen. If we have to pay, according to your fee schedule, $150 every time I take a dump trailer in, it's going out on the street and let you guys come pick it up once a week and see how fast it piles up. Now that's not going to do anything about all the vacant property that I own that I have to clean up all the time because I'm the owner and someone's trash is on my property. Code enforcement wants me to pick up someone else's trash. We do that because we're mandated to do it. We take it to the dump because there's no other place to put it because there is no pickup on a vacant lot or a vacant 10 acre track. We keep it clean. We dispose of it. I pay considerable amount of money in landfill charges because I own numerous properties. Uh, I, I can't see that you're, you're only going to create more problems for yourself. I mean, if the problem is the other people coming in from out of county, gosh, that's good. <laughs> you guys, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how to stop that. But I mean, everybody in this county, you're going to know most of us that go out there and dump. It's the same people all the time. We're trying to keep the place clean. We're mandated to keep it clean by your ordinances. And now you want to penalize us and charge us. You dropped the solid waste assessment fees this year, 30 or what, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. And now you want to come back and hit, you want to nickel and dime everybody for more fees. That's, I don't know, I think that's going to cause a lot of problems. Thank you. Mr. Danny Baggs, you're the next speaker. Yes, sir. I think everybody made some real good statements. Mr. McLean, Mr. Diver, like Mr. Diver said, if you take oak limbs out, if your garbage pickups on a Friday, you take oak limbs out there on a Monday, a big truckload of them, you leave them on the side curb. By Friday, they pick the limbs up. You still got a truckload of leaves there that somebody's got to go back because they've already fallen off. I worked for a big land a timber company for 30 some odd years. Whenever they stopped taking garbage on Sunday, I would have to unload a bulldozer on the side of the road and push the trash from in front of a gate right out here by the dump in order to get through that gate on the company land in order to do my job. That's what we're going to end up right with right here. But what I'd like to know, it started out being a deal with the us with the out-of-towners coming in here, but now it's turned into a money situation. It doesn't have anything at all to do with that out of town. And like uh, Mr. Swain just said, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what to do with that situation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Baggs. Chris Hancock, you're the next speaker. Chris Hancock, 280 West Tokoy Road, uh, Palatka, Florida, 32177. Um, my family's original settlement <coughs> here in Putnam County. We've lived here all our lives. You pull that mic a little bit closer to you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
I said, uh, my family's original settlers right here in Putnam County. We've lived here all our lives. We've watched the county go from trash to being cleaned up. It looks really good. I'm proud of this county, proud to be a part of it. But I see that, that with this increase in fee, we're going to have a, a, a dump problem. The people are going to pile it up on the side of the road, just like Mr. Baggs said. We have uh, some property out on West River Road, Palmetto Bluff Road. And uh, I've personally picked up numerous, numerous trailer loads of trash and took them to the dump to keep people from, because they dump it at my gate. Now, who's going to be responsible to clean that up? Because I'm going to push it in the road now. I'll push it in the ditch, the county ditches, and I'll call the county and say, hey, y'all got a problem out here, because that's what it's going to come to. I'm not going to pay a fee to pick up other people's garbage and carry it away. I think what we're doing is we're penalizing the citizens of Putnam County instead of addressing the problem. We're putting a Band-Aid on an issue that needs to be addressed with the people that are violating the codes. We're already paying the fees. So uh, my mother was talking to Mr. Palacere yesterday and it was talking about a, a, maybe a sticker. I don't know. Uh, my thought was, was when a person buys a tag that he can have a, the option of getting a sticker for his windshield. If it's not affixed to his truck or vehicle, he can't dump you know, unless he pays the fee. I mean, that's just an idea. I'm throwing it out. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but something besides charging a man money to drop off garbage that he's already paying to drop off. The other thing was going to be is if an individual has to start if the county makes the waste management people start picking up the garbage that the individual citizens take out there, there's going to end up being an increase in their fees. So now we're going to penalize the county again. We're going after the citizens again. We take care of the, we're not taking care of the citizens of Putnam County. We're penalizing them for another problem. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, oh, Mr. Hancock. Day. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, if I may uh, just make a comment. Uh, Identify yourself for the benefit of the public. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mike Anderson, uh, Deputy County Administrator, Budget Officer. Uh, a point that uh, was alluded to by Mr. Gass that I think maybe we need to uh, uh, bring to the surface again is the fact that these convenience centers have a cost to operate. Somebody has to pick up that cost. When we calculated the solid waste assessment this year, if you recall during our deliberations, uh, the discussion, as I recall, was that it would be more equitable to charge the citizens that use the convenience centers for that service rather than crank that cost into the, the special assessment. So we took that cost out. Uh, under the assumption that we would charge for that service, we estimated the amount of revenue that would be generated from it, and we took that out of the equation and calculated the, the new solid waste assessment. Uh, we can't provide th that service for nothing. If the citizens that use that convenience center are not going to pay for it, then by all rights, we need to crank that cost into the special assessment. Somebody's got to pay for it. And if we do that, that's going to raise that special assessment another 10 to $11. So again, uh, uh, to me, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that somebody's got to pick up that cost. Who's it going to be? The person that uses the service, or you're going to make the citizen pay for it, that never uses a convenience center. It, it's a simple equation in, in, in my opinion. So uh, with all due respect, I just wanted to make sure that was understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Mr. Gass. Some of the people who made comments brought up reasons that this fee is going into place. We have to remember that the assessment is not for yard waste. 
The assessment is not for vacant property. The assessment is not for land clearing. Those kind of things were brought up in comments just a few minutes ago. And if you have vacant property, that property has not paid an assessment. That material from vacant property should be paid for for disposal. If you're doing land clearing, that is not covered under the ordinance. That should be paid for. It's not covered by the assessment. Tree removal is not covered by the assessment. If it is not leaves, grass, limbs less than four feet in length or four inches in diameter, if it's any larger than that, it is not covered by the assessment. Those items should be paid for. When somebody brings land clearing in that's been cut up into little bitty pieces and says this is from my yard, we have no way of knowing. This is one of the attempts that we're doing to try to make sure that there is equity for all of the citizens out there. The people who have a house on a quarter acre lot that's producing a amount of yard waste that's typical and somebody who has 25 acres and is doing land clearing on that property and everything else makes an inequity for the person on a smaller lot. They're paying a greater percentage of the disposal. By placing this fee, we're, all we're trying to do is recoup some of that cost and make it more equal for all of the citizens that are paying the assessment. Okay. Sir. Yes, let's, let's use uh, Mr. Swing, if you don't mind, your example. Um, multiple rentals, he's correct that he might have uh, three or four families moving in a weekend and he would pile that up. Now he pays the assessment on every one of those rentals, correct? That's correct. All right, so why wouldn't he be able to do the county a favor, as he says, and move that off the street because it's very unsightly to the landfill? Well, if you look at rental property, that's actually a commercial enterprise. If you have two evictions in a year from a rental property, that clean out that's being done from a rental property would be greater than the actual amount of waste that should be brought in from the people living there. So you're saying it's not typical as you referred to? That, that's not your typical waste is a, is a rental clean out. That would not be considered your typical type of waste that's paid for in your assessment to, to be collected. It is a old couch that's being put out for pickup because you got a new one. It is your garbage that you are producing in your kitchen every week. It is the yard waste, the horticultural trash, the lawn maintenance. It's the maintenance of your landscape that you're paying for in your assessment. It is not all of these other entities that for years somehow or another have been allowed to go in free to the dump. Oh, I, I'm not arguing this has led up to our high assessment and our yes. problems. We have ignored this and the practices associated with it for a lot of years. But on the same thought, I don't think that we have spoken to the public well enough. I don't understand it yet. How could they understand it? I mean, it keeps, something new keeps surfacing every discussion we had. And I just, I have to say that. Mr. Anderson's point is right on. You know, we, we absolutely, I remember that did not pull that in, we, we took it out of the budget. I'm not sure that wasn't a mistake. Well, I just think we need more discussion on this, Mr. Chairman. Thank we you, we, we took this to the Solid Waste Advisory Board. It, they were tasked with coming up with solutions to reduce the assessment. That was their main function, and to reduce the assessment as quickly as possible. Their first choice was to close the convenience centers. The second choice is to try to recoup the charges for the convenience centers it was. and for the convenience of double handling waste. And that is what this process is trying to do. Okay. Thank I you. agree. We are trying to do it, but I'm not sure we've done it yet. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Harvey. Mr. Gass, while you're here, can I ask a few questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not going to drill down too far. I'll do that a little bit later. 
Uh -huh. If you're going to ask multiple questions, I want to get all of our citizens, okay. and once I bring it to us, then it won't go back out to the citizens. I understand. You had mentioned the um, solid waste committees that were formed to study the landfill. I got an email from Ms. Debbie Griffin who said that they could never get the proper numbers on what the collection centers cost the county. Have you ever really, I mean, you said last week it's about 150000 for each location, but she said they never really got the total numbers from you. I did provide those numbers to them. I don't know if she was there at that time or not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Kevin Heiser. Kevon. Last meeting. Hi. Hello. I'm one at the Hancocks that are original settlers. Okay. I right. can remember when the washing machines and the refrigerators, back when we had green dumpsters in Bostwick, there was enough garbage to fill an acre, let alone that green can that they wanted us to put it in. I didn't ever use that. I carried it to the dump. I understand there's special collections out there in Interlarkin or wherever. It has nothing to do with me. I'm not opposed to paying $10 more to help on that. But I am opposed, extremely opposed, to charging citizens to take garbage to the dump to help county because it's going to end up all over West Tokoy Road, Palmetto Bluff, West River Road, all those areas where it's a big, huge tract of land. And I'm not cleaning it up. I'll call you. You can come clean it. It's my property, but I don't want to have to work myself to death because nobody else wants to carry their garbage to the dump because it's going to cost them. And I do pay my assessment fee. And I have a girlfriend that has two vacant lot, or two lots. One's a horse pasture, and she pays two assessment fees. And all this on the other lot is horses. So what we're doing is not right. We need to go back to the board and look at it again and figure out who's doing what. And charge these people that are coming from out of county. Don't charge me for their problem. It's not mine, it's theirs. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Swanda Ruckowitz, you're next. Good morning. Good morning. I would just like to have something understood to me and probably everybody else, okay? So you want the garbage to go to the road and they're gonna come pick it up. Well, yeah, it was every two weeks, so now, Mr. Gass said, it will be every week that a truck will come, okay? Then that's, where's that money gonna come from? Okay, then, how, how do I put it this way so it'll come out right? Um, who's going to pay for when it's in, in our areas, thrown on private property and all of this garbage? Who's gonna pick that up? That's a fee that's gonna have to be paid for by the county because I'm sure not going to get out there and do it. Okay, I, I've lived here for 32 years, and bef before they used to dump it out there, and we had the big dumpsters that came out there, and we cleaned it up. I'm not doing it again. I'm not going to do that. So he needs to explain to me where all this money is going to come from because they're not going to throw it. They're not going to pay to have it dumped. There is the negotiations with Waste Pro in the contract is where the every week pickup, so there is no hidden costs and no additional fees to come from that. For bulky waste, Chairman. For bulky Do you waste. think it's going to go up, Mr. Flag? No, ma'am. Think we, about that, it. That fee is it, it will. It will. Okay. Believe me, it negotiated will. Negotiated the contract, Mr. Yeah, the contract. And is how long signed. is that contract? It's just done with Waste Pro, Mr. Dan, in the back of the room. I know how long seven. is the contract for. The seven-year contract. Was it? Ten years. Long time. Well, ten years really isn't a long time if you think about it, okay? But I mean, it's really going to go up. I'm okay. telling you know. That's why we're here. If okay. everyone will continue to do just what you're doing, speak to us like you are. Right. We are listening, and we're also listening at, you know, the numbers that we're having to deal with. We're listening to our citizens, and you all are doing a marvelous job of presenting your opinions and expressing the facts and what you feel the consequences will be. And we are listening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Glenn Adams, you're the next speaker. And then, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. 
I'm Glenn Adams, and I live down on South Palm here, about a mile from here. And uh, I'm not an accountant or a rocket scientist, and I may not even be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I've wondered, like in all commissions and just about all meetings of this sort nowadays, all the discussions revolve around ways to pay for something. And like the gentleman pointed out, somebody's got to pay for the landfill. That's no doubt. We all know that. We accept it. So I've wondered, since I'm not an accountant, if you want to laugh at me, go ahead. I've been laughed at before. But has anybody ever considered the possibility of maybe somehow bonding the county, the, the landfill, like on a stock exchange and selling shares to the public? If shares were something like, pick a number, 10 bucks a share, I'd be more than glad to pay 10 or 12 dollars or shares, you know. I'd do that part so long as when I wanted to take my, my oak tree limbs, which have no trouble raining on me, to the dump free of charge, that I could do that because I would own my little piece of the landfill. As I say, if it's outrageous, say so, but thank you for giving me the chance to, to point that out. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Yes, are there any other citizens who intended to speak on this issue that did not fill out a card or you have a card with other issues on it? Good morning, sir. John Spells, 106 Citrus Lane. But um, I was at one of the meetings when they was talking about closing the facilities down as far as hauling the trash. And it was brought up that if they closed the facilities down, people would start dumping trash in the woods. Now, in other words, you don't swip, flip the whole script all the way around. Because I rode down Hunter Road yesterday, and, and it's in bad shape. And it's a shame people are already starting to dump garbage along those dirt roads. Now, there's no way in the world you can tell me that y'all think this is going to work charging people when you got Hunter Road, you got West River Road, you got Boswick, you got Interlarkin, you have so much tree trash. If we had a hurricane or a tornado, would y'all still charge to dump all the tree debris? I got several different properties that every now and then I like to go and clean up. But if you put that stuff at the road curve, those guys are not going to fight with those tree limbs and stuff trying to get them in that garbage truck. And if they sit there over a week, all those leaves and stuff going to fall off the limbs, and then it's an eyesore. You got people that got nice-looking communities that want to, when they clean it up, they want to haul it out. But when y'all creating all of this here for revenue, you ain't doing nothing but creating more of a problem. I got property in the Mondex now, got trash bags on it due to the fact that it's a place Way out of sight, people will load a truck up, go and just throw the bags off. Now, when code enforcement ever go out there, then they'll tell them I need to clean the place up. All to me it really is is a way that code enforcement can create more revenue of telling people they got to clean their yards because it's got to go to the landfill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spade. Any other citizens to speak on this issue? Mr. Bags, did you want to say something else? Well, if you're going to say it, come, come and say it if you're going to say it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Flagg, I think Mr. Spell said everything. But okay. I believe that, if, like the gentleman over here said, he mentioned something about $10. If there's something in the paper that come out about my uh, garbage fee was going to go up $10, I wouldn't even be here today. But whenever I, I may go to the dump, I may no, not go for a while, but nobody picks my garbage up. I haul my own garbage. I live on Letty Lane. You can ride out there right now. It looks like a garbage dump because of the stray dogs, which I'm thinking to set them telephones on fire about the stray dogs because I'm not putting my garbage out there. My neighborhood look like that. Mm -hmm. Every uh, went Thursday morning, I go through blowing my horn to get dogs out of everybody else's garbage. They leave their garbage cans out and all. They drug all over the road and everything. Do I get any kind of kickback because I haul my own garbage off? No, sir. I've never had a garbage can out in front of my house. But you're paying for the service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Baggs. Any other citizen comments on this issue? We will close the public comments on the issue, and we will have now our commissioner discussions and deliberations. Commissioner Pellissier. Yes, sir. Um, I've answered numerous calls in the last several weeks, 
and I don't think it's a, a perfect answer to the question. I think there's some trial and error that's uh, going to be involved in, in whatever we come to. But uh, my theory has been that at the central landfill, which is there uh, off of uh, 17 North, that anybody that's taking their own garbage out there, yard debris, household garbage, whatever it is they're taking, they shouldn't be charged to dump. The convenience centers, that is a operation that has a fee attached to it. And I feel that uh, that's something that, that, that the county can incur to, to operate those convenience centers at a no charge basis. But when uh, there's a lot of people, and I'm guilty of it too, that uh, the few things that I, the only thing I take to the dump is stuff I can't burn because I'm I burn everything in my area out there as far as on, when the weather's right. Um, but the operation of those convenience centers has a built-in cost, and I feel like that that has to be absorbed somewhere. Uh, somebody has to pay for it. Um, but as far as our central landfill no matter where you are in the county um, if you're willing to load it up and haul it you should be able to dump for free and I had a couple other ideas um, I had a man uh, Mr. Baggs call me and told me that my idea of having to have anything other than a driver's license was asinine is that right Mr. Baggs yes, okay you will have to have your tax certificate in there because you could have a Well, your driver's license won't suffice. You're going to have to have your tax certificate with it because there are people that have buddies that live out of county, have a buddy that lives in Putnam. Hey, make me a copy of your tax certificate and let me, so I can go dump it at your landfill. There's people that's going to look for a way to bend and break the law. It's just, just, it's just the nature of some of, the beat, of some of those folks. But if you have the driver's license that matches the tax certificate, then that verifies that you are who you are and that you do pay taxes in this county. So I think both those documents would have to be uh, uh, made available. And uh, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing us as Ms. Hancock, she and I talked yesterday on the phone, that uh, in our uh, tax uh, bill when it goes out, that you receive your 2016, 2017 Putnam County Landfill Access Permit that would be affixed to your windshield. And either you could have that or you'd have your driver's license and your tax certificate, which would gain you access into the landfill. And that's that's my opinion on the matter. Thank you, Mr. Pellissi. Mr. Harvey, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, some people don't live in areas where we can burn, and I appreciate Mr. Pellissier's comments. And out in the Lock and Lake Estates, you can't burn out there. The lots aren't big enough. They do, uh, but it's not really designed for that. And let me assure you that it's not a convenience to go to the collection center. If you've ever been out to these collection centers, there's bars sticking up there. When you're unloading, you're hitting your head up against the bar because a pickup truck backed into one of the boxes one time. It's not very convenient at all. What's more convenient is to pile it up on the road, go in the house, take a bath, and put the game on. But I don't want my neighborhood looking like a pig pen. And I called around yesterday to Marion County, no mandatory curbside pickup, 18 collection centers, um, their assessment's $87 per dwelling, $100 permit, allows three people from out of town to dump um, waste into their landfill, into their collection agencies. Clay County, mandatory curbside, four collection centers, no out of towners, but illegal dumping costs them $200,000 a year. Yesterday, illegal dumping in Marion County, he said 40% of a $900,000 budget goes to uh, enforcement of illegal dumping, $360,000. Alachua County, I have numerous emails and I won't go into all of them, but they waive some tipping fees. And I asked, well, I was more referring to the enforcement means like Marion County has two deputies and spend almost 360. And she told me, I said, would you say this is an issue based on no charge at the collection centers because they only charge $6,000 for um, waiving of tipping fees and they use keep Alachua beautiful like we used to use keep Putnam beautiful 
And she said, yes, collection centers and all of our municipalities have curbside collection. That's what keeps the solid waste out of the side of the road. Yesterday, Commissioner Palacier, I was down in your area. Mr. Jimmy Miller at Miller Blueberry Plantation has already been the recipient of a nice pile of oak, a dump truck load, and garbage. Now, they didn't put it in front of his gate. That was nice of them not to do that. But it is off to the left-hand side. He's got to now spend his money to go out and clean that up or hire someone to do it or get a codes case put on him. That's not fair. I'm going to tell you something. I have drove my truck into Violet Lake many years ago with Keep Putnam Beautiful, cleaning beer bottles and stuff out of the lake. I have drove around this county picking up trash every Saturday. I don't have the time or the appetite to go back out there and do that. And I'll tell you what broke me was the guy was standing there and told me I missed a piece of paper when he was in his yard. And I said, fella, I don't even live here. I live five miles away. But from now on, you can clean up your mess. Folks, this is a bad, bad thing. We have not thought this through. We don't need to continue down this path, and this commissioner doesn't support it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Harris, you're next. I think the um, recommendation from the Solid Waste Advisory Committee that we remove the uh, convenience centers is the main thing that got me. It's such a long drive for the people in Crescent City and the people in Interlochen to go to the central landfill. And the idea of tearing down the center, something you know that we've built that is used and it's a convenience to our people, is very important to keep them. So I think arriving at the fees for dumping at the convenience centers was really kind of a compromise so that we could pay our bill um, with what the convenience centers cost and still maintain the service. I don't like charging for dumping. We were trying to keep the price down as low as possible. We were even trying in our discussions to not charge anything if it was just you know two or three bags and just make it easy like if you forgot to put your garbage out and you don't want it sitting in the can in the yard for another week you could drive out there and dump it so it didn't seem so bad to um, make that compromise but I really uh, had not thought about the people that get things dumped in their yards that they didn't do and then them picking it up and then going to the uh, anywhere to dump it at a dump and um, I, I don't know what to do about that but that bothers me a lot and uh, I would like not to have to do the do this at all but we do have to face reality that we have to pay our bills one way or another so is there a better way I would love to find it. I would love to hear a recommendation of a better way to do it so that we can still keep Putnam County clean and um, and not have to charge if there's another way. So um, I wouldn't mind having another workshop, talking about it further and see if we can find a fairer way. Uh, would there be a way that we could determine that someone is bringing in something that someone dumped in their yard? Or, I mean, how would you prove that? Everybody's got a camera on their hip this day and time. That's what I did last yesterday, Commissioner. I took it and sent it to Rick last night. Are you talking yeah. about <laughs> Yeah, I did. So maybe there's another way. If um, I would not mind workshopping this further. I know we're putting off the inevitable. We're going to have to make a decision and do it. But I just want you to understand where we're coming from. We've got an expense, we've got to pay for it. Uh, if anyone has a better suggestion of how we could do it, I would, I would love to hear it. And um, I'm, I still wanted us to be able to do the small, uh, you know, if someone didn't take their garbage in, they could take it to the dump at no charge. And it's ended up being like a $2 charge, but um, I'm certainly open to discussing it further. Thank you. Commissioner Lightman. Okay, I think I said a lot a minute ago uh, how I felt. Um, I just don't think we're ready. I'm not, uh, 
criticizing anyone. And Mr. Anderson, you bring up some great points. Financially, if we go into another workshop to vet out what we've learned from our citizens today and ourselves, um, does that mess us up for the coming year? Uh, I, I, that concerns me more than anything at this point. We definitely need more discussion on this subject. Well, it, it does concern me too. Uh, I mean, you know, we're in the 12th hour here ready to adopt uh, the final version of the budget tonight, and now you're talking about wanting to change, uh, you know, a major fee structure that everyone I thought had uh, agreed upon. Um, I, I work for you, I'll do what you tell me to do, but I, I, I just think this is a poor time to be backing out of what we discussed in uh, these budget meetings. Um, I, I would rather see you come up with a plan during the next fiscal year to, uh, if you're not happy with the system, uh, revamp the whole system. I mean, if we need to do something different, um, you know, with how we collect and charge fees, uh, I don't think that's something that's that's going to be resolved in a week or two. In two weeks, we've got a new fiscal year that, that begins, and rates and charges have got to be in effect. Uh, I've got to get something to the uh, uh, tax collector you know, within the next few days as to what our rates are going to be. So, yes, sir, I'm, I'm very concerned about postponing this. Uh, Mr. Mr. Leary may feel differently go, or want to Go ahead, Mr. Leary. Leary. Well, I mean, I think that the central area of, of concern is how to handle uh, the individuals who will bring waste to the central landfill uh, who have paid an assessment. Uh, I think clearly everybody recognizes that uh, people who are commercial enterprises, uh, that the fees that are, have assessed, uh, that are in existence and, and need to be implemented and enforced, that needs to be applied October the 1st. And I, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I think I don't think there's much debate about the fact that that needs to occur. We need to talk. We, we got this kind of time deal, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Let's let's stop you right there for a moment. How do we feel? I don't think we're in a time crunch at all. I, mean, I, I hate to say that, but we have uh, this ordinance or supposed ordinance has been in effect for years. I was even out there and said that, and we haven't charged anybody from out of town. And if that's the, what's driving the train, $400,000 in, in expected revenue, 300000 of that from out-of-towners or commercial, we're talking $100,000. That's, that's not a big cost to your retained earnings. And I don't think we're in a big time crunch here. I asked when this first topic came up, let's wait till January, get this thing through, let's work this thing out, all the bugs out. We've not worked the bugs out. We discussed all this stuff in, in workshops. So, okay, there you go. I'm Mr. Sorry. Harvey, but I, I think our CFO just explained to us the ripple effect if he's not with his other constitutional officers in the next few days. So I think time is at the essence. Yes, we didn't arrive to a uh, point of agreement yet, but there's no reason we can't do it right now. I mean, other commissioner, I mean, you're asking for that right now, but we have to compromise. Mr. Leary brings up a good point. Uh, I think commercial garbage should pay commercial. And I think Putnam County citizens, uh, if they don't realize sometimes things are commercial, like you said, Mr. Gass, uh, they, if a tree removal in your yard is exactly that, you're going part of that cost is going to be the whatever it costs to take it to the landfill. We can probably agree on that stuff as a, a community. But I think there is revenue that we have not realized yet from the, especially in the convenience centers, from those commercial entities, the weekend warriors and stuff. I know that the surrounding counties, especially St. John's County, there, it is a known fact in their neighborhoods, take it to Putnam, it's worth it. I know of one incident, a small deck on the back of a house costs 89 bucks to throw away, right there on 207 and I-95, that guy thought twice about coming over here. 
He really did. He didn't do it, but it's that easy is what I'm saying. There, I think there's a lot of money we're leaving on the table. I do Mr. Too. Leary. Well, I, I think what I was trying to suggest, Mr. Chairman, is the fact that what I glean from comments is that the primary concern is the assessment or the proposed assessment of the $2 and $5 charge for people who are paying the assessment already who want to bring minor amounts of horticulture waste or garbage to the central landfill. All the other fees and charges against commercial or people doing land clearing or things of that nature are charges that ought to go into effect on October the 1st. And if all we want to deliberate about and reconsider is the two to five dollar charge that has been suggested. I'm not so sure that the volume of revenue for that is going to have a significant impact right. that wouldn't allow you to take a few weeks, if that's the case, to deliberate on how you want to handle that. But everything else needs to go into effect on October the 1st. Correct. And the assessment, I mean, that's got to go because that's already been approved by the district and it's already, I mean, that can't be changed. That's, that, that's set to go. So the only, if the only, if the question is about the two and the five dollar fee and how we want to handle that relative to people already paying the assessment, you know, if, if we actually delayed the implementation of that little aspect of it uh, and, and recognize the fact that what Mr. Gast recited as people meeting the definition of, of what, what the ordinance provides for in terms of, you know, what meets the definition of horticulture, waste, and garbage, and those people continuing to bring that to the central landfill and just holding that little small charge in abeyance until such time as you have time to fully evaluate that, I think we can live with that. I don't think that's gonna be a significant detriment to the revenue flow. Yeah, but put all other fees and charges entire, in effect on October the 1st. Yeah, we can't scrap the entire uh, fee structure there. So my thoughts are is that the residency, we're not looking to penalize anybody. That's first and foremost. I hear the rumor mill talking about um, because the county didn't do this, they're trying to do that. That is not the issue at all. The issue is trying to make sure that the business is operating um, in a sound fiscal manner. Uh, I certainly will support and recommend to each of us that the assessed residential disposal be put in indefinite abeyance uh, until such time uh, we can revisit and come up with an amicable plan uh, that causes our citizens to know that number one, our aim was to get that assessment as low as we could get it uh, and that's what we were focusing on. Uh, in the process of, of seeking to get the assessment uh, at the lowest possible point uh, there, the side effects of that by maintaining and keeping the convenience centers uh, meant that we had to recoup uh, some revenue uh, from all concern that were actually coming physically to the facilities. Um, I do support uh, us not uh, in any way, shape, form, or fashion causing um, assessment paying citizens uh, any, any additional ch charges um, for bringing what, quote, they have already uh, paid for to be picked up. So I think that we have time to, to vet that. Uh, so the recommendation is to put the assessed residential disposal in indefinite abeyance and then um, support the uh, rest of the uh, landfill fees and charges. So Mr. Chairman, it's just the first part. It says assessed residential disposal. Do you mean for the tires part of it to I think the remain? the tire situation is different. Mr. Gass, your so I that's guess been a given for years. I mean, yeah. the five. T yeah, I mean, I that's, been that, in, yeah. that's been in effect for years. Yeah, I think the tire situation have to remain. I think it was breaking news this morning that someone dropped off um, so many hundred thousand tons of tires in Flagler County. Thank God they didn't keep coming this way uh, there, but that was on the news this morning. Um, and those individuals who choose to break the law, I think that citizens do need to use their technology. And I'm not talking about the technology after the fact because you spotted a pile, catch them in action so that the sheriff's department and local 
uh, police departments uh, can have some evidence. Don't get up in anybody's face, but uh, shoot the tag. Mr. Gass, I think that what I'm hearing is the first paragraph under assessed residential disposal that we actually um, put that in the indefinite abeyance. Uh, the section that's talking about the um, disposal of the tires, that is a continuation of an existing uh, necessary policy. And I think that for now, we need that to remain. I mean, that needs to remain. Yeah. Here, here and have to bring up the here. point that still includes five free tires a year Correct. per resident. Right. Correct. So the only thing that we're, we're actually, and we're not deleting it, but we're, we're putting it on hold for, for further future discussions so that for the citizen that's going to the landfill this week, next week, next month, uh, nothing really has changed for them if we do that, is what I'm hearing. Mr. Pellissier. I can support it until we reach a consensus on the other. Uh, something else I want to bring to light that uh, just for you to be thinking on. Um, if a homeowner is doing their own um, owner builder work or they're re-roofing their house, I don't feel like they should be assessed for going out there and dumping their scraps from their addition. If they have the ability to afford to uh, hire a contractor to do it, then they certainly can afford to pay that fee if the contractor, somebody else is picking it up and taking it away for them. I think that should be it's something to think It's kind of like that tree, about. though, Commissioner Pellissier, that, that they're chopping down. I mean, what's the difference in the two? Is it generating <coughs> commercial garbage? Why are they taking it? that tree down themselves, or do they hire sure. ABC any, tree any company way. to take it down? Anyway. It's bulky waste. That, that you don't want in front of your yard. Well, if they're going to take it to the central landfill, I think let them take it to the central landfill at no charge. If they want to take it to the convenience center, then there, there should be a fee. Because that's the problem. That's the problem that I'm hearing is the cost is in, is being incurred at, well, we're at gonna the have convenience centers. We're going to have a chance. We all are in consensus to go with what Mr. Leary just suggested and our chairman to discuss this. Because I have a, a uh, I'd like to discuss that with you further in a public setting. The how can you charge for those satellite places and not the central it's they're doing the work for you yeah I, I would have that same concern uh, Commissioner Pellissier we don't want any of the South Putnam West Putnam North Putnam uh, citizens which I mean the North would obviously use the central but we don't want any of the citizens in the outlying areas to feel that they are in a substandard uh, classification Didn't say they as if, well no what I'm saying is if, if they're paying because they're closer to the convenience center and others are not paying because they're closer to central then that could create same effect we have I, I, I see your point but the point I'm making is they're still doing the work for you by handling it themselves it's not going through county employees or waste pro or whoever it's it's them cleaning up their properties there could be a neighborhood cleanup who knows but they're going to the expense of, of doing it so if they're going to take it to the central landfill why should we charge them to dump there when they're doing the handling work it's well, not costing us a dime well we at the, at the central we are obviously having to bring it i mean for, at the south and west we're having to bring it in exactly right. central central. Cost there. Uh, with your blessing uh, daniel from waste pro is here he may have some comment that uh, might be of some use to us he's really Maybe. our contractor yeah, yeah I don't still may have some. I think that in the next meeting um, th that we will properly um, notice when we're talking about that, I don't think we need to, to draw him into this. If we are all going to be satisfied on consensus that we're going to deal with the disposal of the five tires per year that's currently here under the assessed section, all of the other sections as are uh, presented. Any further, any further discussion on that? Mr. Matter? Chairman, yes, sir. to be clear now, um, the, we're taking out the top section where it says... Just uh, the first paragraph under assessed residential disposal that is being placed on indefinite abeyance is and it the says recommendation. And $5 charge. The $2 and $5, $2 charge, charge. Is, is being put on indefinite, recommended to be put on indefinite abeyance um, under the assessed residential. It says to a county disposal facilities. That includes convenience centers, correct? Yes. yes. Thank correct. you. I just does, want to make sure that include the central landfill. Yes. Our assessments it's every, are all of our disposal. All of our that. facilities. Yeah. Yes. So we're not going to charge any of our assessment holders any type of fee right now at the collection center 
or at the central landfill, correct? Anywhere that's legally dumped. Okay. Yeah. Or not. Or not. Or not. not. Okay. Entertain a motion to that. So uh, moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. It, Proper motion uh -huh. and second. Further discussion. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District five. Yes. District four. Yes. District three. Yes. This time the commission will take a five minute recess. Been waiting patiently. Patiently. <laughs> hey, I'm a patient guy. Where are we at now? Where are we at? On a we're in public, public comments. Public comments. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> right. Shores of the St. John's. Uh, my name is Sam Carr. I am uh, live at 108 Riverside Drive, Satsuma. Uh, that would be channel marker number 13 if you're on the river. Okay. Um, I'm here today to tell you, and I, I gave you the brochure uh, detailing the, the fact that uh, world famous authors and scholars are coming to Palatka this, in October. And uh, they were doing that as a result of the Bartram Trail Conference uh, as, uh, has, has agreed to have their uh, biannual uh, trip to our, our uh, conference here in Palatka, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that's huge for the town. We're going to have 300 people from outside of uh, the state mainly coming into town and uh, to, uh, to uh, enjoy listening all about the, um, the scholars and their research into the Bartram Trail in Putnam County. The, the purpose of the conference is, is just that, is to talk about William Bartram, John Bartram on the St. John's River, particularly here in Putnam County. So you have the brochure and, uh, and all of that. We'd certainly like to have you all come out and, and enjoy the show. The frolic on Saturday night is going to be incredible. It's going to be uh, at the, uh, on the waterfront. We'll have live rattlesnakes. We'll have Ooh. live alligators. We'll have uh, some alligator. turtles, and we'll even have the long warrior there. And we'll have Billy Bartram there, so it'll be a really uh, eventful thing, and it'll be, uh, and we'll have some live music from local musicians and so forth. This is a real thing. This came about as a result of uh, Nancy Harris's um, um, uh, Waterways Committee uh, formed a subcommittee, started in September of 2012, and uh, lo and behold, uh, my dream has come true. It's you amazing that, that this is going to be. Can I add something, Mr. Chairman? Please. Yes, ma'am. Um, Sam came to our meeting and he had read a book about William Bartram and he was so excited about it. He says, we need to do something. We have so much of what he's written in his book in Putnam County. And I said, Sam, let's form a committee and let's go. And he is the one that has brought that out. And he's done such a marvelous job and it's, it's going to help with nature-based tourism. It's going to bring people into the county and bring money in. and. Uh, he just got started and it caught fire. So the speaker is from England, right? She is. Uh, yeah, she is. Uh, the original speaker that we were having was the lady who gave us the digital images from the Natural History Museum of London. But she uh, was unable to make it for personal reasons. And so instead, we have Miss Andrea Wolf, who is a world renowned author, and uh, she's done. BBC specials and so forth, and uh, she's going to be the the, uh, the keynote speaker on Friday night and Saturday. It's really amazing. We've got we made a list of the books that the uh, that the authors have written that'll be at this thing, and it's over 15 books that they have written that will be represented there. And then there's been a new book written by a couple of uh, 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 of uh, scholars that uh, is pertaining to and uh, just just the St. John's River. And uh, that new book will be there too. It's really amazing. This is this is going to be something that Putnam County's really never seen before because of the, it's it's a worldwide organization that is coming here. It's really amazing. So really cool. Thank that. you, Sam. Yes. Yeah, thank for you. Your uh, so please come out and all that. And you know this is going to be Putnam County at its best. So so this is really a positive thing. Without the rattlesnake. No, the rattlesnake will be there. <laughs> hey, Billy Barton is 270 years old, approximately. Yeah, I can't wait right. to see him. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. But the story's great. Uh, I also gave, gave you all a map, okay? And uh, I am uh, also a, uh, the governor's appointment to the Florida Greenways and Trails Council. And I'm a governor's appointment to that council because I live on the river and I use the river as a trail. And so they, they, that's, they have all these people. There's 20 people on the council. 
part of my responsibilities on that council is to make sure that uh, that our that the council's plans go forward. Part of the council's plans are the trail system that is uh, that is here in in, uh, in Florida. And uh, uh, coming Thursday, they're having their major meeting of the year to make sure that the trails that we are planning on are still the trails that we want. And I just uh, I just draw your attention to the map that you can't read. But the map that you can read uh, shows that uh, what, they're, what they're doing is establishing these major corridors. And now there's money to actually start building this stuff. And uh, you can see that that Flatka Bridge is the gateway to one, two, three, four, five major, uh, what they call shared use, non-motorized trails coming right through Palatka. So Palatka will be the trail capital of, uh, of Northeast Florida, there's no doubt about it. So just to let you know, I'm representing the county at those meetings and all, and the work that has been done by the trails committees and so forth in the previous has put us in really good stead. Uh, Camp Putnam County is recognized as being on top of it. We better be because, again, there's money available through DOT now to start filling in these gaps, and we got to be ready when they when they start building. So, right. Mr. Carr, we certainly salute uh, you, the committee as a whole, and this conference looked like it's really going to be uh, a stately conference uh, to be hosted here, and so please express our appreciation uh, to all of the committee. Uh, for the the efforts to make this happen, I mean, it, it was a lot of homework done here. Do you have other committee members present? Uh, no, well, he bailed out. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Nancy and, and let's see, I think there's anybody? No, but uh, Yvonne is is part of that committee. Uh, 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 Ken Mahaffey. Ken Mahaffey is the co-chair. Dean Campbell is part of that committee. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Shan Puritan is part of that committee. Um, so forth. They're, they're, it's incredible to sit there and see these people and their interest in actually doing the pulling this off. The other part that is encouraging to me is that the Bartram Trail Conference people, they don't I'm the only one in the state of Florida, <laughs> okay, that, that is that is on that board. And uh, and so uh, they all make comments to me like we can't wait to get there. Because they want to see our natural resources, they want to see the, where the, the, the places that Billy Bartram actually was. And uh, we, are, we are ground central for that. So it's really cool to see people outside of the county excited about coming to Putnam County. Thank you, Thank you Thank so you. very much. Thank you for uh, following up with us and we're making notes of the dates. Okay. Ms. Faye Sparkman, you're next. Tell me you was bringing some snakes up here. Mm. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm up here about the mowing yeah. of the county because those pictures I just gave you, the three with the black one, happened at Flamingo and First Street with the little tiny kids who are shorter than your weeds. That one snake, the black snake, came out two weeks ago today, Rattler. One of those little kids could have been bit. So the little boy pushed the other little boy out and the mother sitting there thought they were gonna fight. She get out, she saw the snake, she got it. Last, on Friday, your last sheet with the bottom page with all the rattlers came out Friday. Here all these little kids are, that one was six foot long. This county has not done something right that the weeds aren't being mowed and she told me to tell all of you this morning. If any one of those kids get hurt, she will sue each and every one of you because she pays her taxes. So something's wrong that you guys aren't looking at the head of engineering to make him do his job. I understand you had somebody come here and offer to come in here and clean up this county one time and help you. You all turned it down. There's something wrong. I pay my taxes too. I don't have any children here, but I care about those little kids. Yes, Mr. Lyle and Mrs. Harris was on the board when a little girl got hit, helped me get the light turned on. All I can do now is come and tell you, these weeds are this high, some of those little kids are only this high. Something's wrong. You guys got to fix this. Get somebody in here and do the mowing. Not only that, this morning on the news they said September, October, November are the worst for allergies. What do you think are in those weeds? My husband's already on oxygen. 
He has three puffers. Now they put him on an allergy pill. How much more do you want this county to take? I'm ashamed of our county. Go back and look at the 1997-98 budget where we had one engineer. This county was kept mowed every two weeks. It did not look like it looks right now. Go back and look at those figures. It wasn't even bringing in as much money as it is now. There's something wrong. Please look at them and do something. Thank you. We are aware of mowing issues and action is being taken on it throughout the county. Thank you. Ms. Karen Chadwick, you're next. Um, thank you. I just wanted to uh, make sure you're aware of a, of a situation. I don't know what you can do or would do. Um, it's about the King's Grant project in um, St. John's County. I sent an email to everybody, um, all the commissioners about that about two weeks ago. And um, it's been denied three times, and every time they go to, it comes before the commissioners in St. John's County gets a little closer to passing. And um, the concern I have about it is, in the, if you read the fine print in their plan, they can't hook into the, 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 um, the county sewage system because that treated wastewater goes into Matanzas River right now, so they don't want to keep adding to that. So they would have to do something else with the wastewater. And what the plan is, is to build a um, retention pond that would handle about uh, half a million gallons a day of wastewater. And then it would have a, um, a wet weather backup plan where if there's a lot of rain, that would, the waste would go, the treated waste would go into the uh, Crescent Lake uh, drainage basin. And the, the plan isn't really specific. I don't know exactly where that would go, but there is a, a, a TMDL <coughs> decided by DEP for um, Crescent Lake. It's, uh, um, it's an impaired water body, and there's a, a plan for that to reduce loading. And so this would be adding to the loading. So I don't see, like if you look at the plan, and I'll send, I'll send the whole thing to you, make it easy. I sent it to um, Commissioner Harvey already. You can see that the lake is divided by um, Flagler and Putnam County, and Bunnell is, their wastewater, treated wastewater is already going into Crescent Lake, and so we don't want to keep adding, you know, the basin is a big area, but the state has a plan to reduce loading, not add to it, and this development hasn't passed yet. Um, it probably will eventually, because developers are kind of on a roll now, and they, the developers have spent a lot of money getting this plan together and hiring all their consultants and I, they're not going to give up so i don't know what you can do to um familiar familiarize yourself with the situation and talk to the st john's county commissioners and and say look we're supposed to be reducing the loading not adding to it so uh, typically what they've done is is the new development hooks in this is what i understand from my looking into it they hook into the wastewater treatment facility that eventually ends up in the Matanzas River. And so they, they said, we can't do that anymore. So they have to find alternative ways to get rid of their sewage. And so every time they, they come back with a revised plan, it's bigger and they've added more development to it. So Can I keep St. going? Has St. River Water Management District been at the table? <laughs> yes, they, they said because as far as the potable water, the uh, development wanted to hook, wanted to put in their own well field, and they said because of water quality, because they're in the area between Hastings and um, the coast, and they've got saltwater intrusion problems, and then the saltwater's coming up from the lower aquifer from us withdrawing so much water. So it's, you can't just put down a well like you used to be able to. Um, Jacksonville's moved three of their wells to the east side of the river, and then they pump, they put huge, it's, a, it's saltwater intrusion is the problem. So they said, well, you can just hook into the county, the municipality that already exists. Well, then that puts existing users at a risk for more saltwater intrusion. And they want to build, um, I think it's 800 homes now. And then they added a, a hospital and a um, um, uh, retirement facility, assisted living facility, shopping. And they just keep adding to it instead of reducing it, which I, 
think it's kind of surprising, but it's, we have a lot, our natural resources, we've got lots of good things going on. We don't want to add pollution um, if we don't have to, you know, and I just want to make sure y'all are aware of that. Mr. Lymel. I've been talking with St. John's County folks, including commissioners on this uh, development, and the problem with, with it at this point in Lake Crescent is identifying that corridor better. It's actually 20 miles in length. So they're having a hard time picturing runoff going from King's Grant to Lake Crescent. That's where we need to focus. It does happen, and it will seep. Look at Silver Springs and the Marion right. County. You know, it can happen, but we really need to focus on that corridor. And, and they're not in our jurisdiction is right. the biggest problem. So we're going to have to go from a regional approach, um, our concerns on this, especially Crescent City and, and their commission. Well, I think the, the key is there is a, a total maximum daily limit already set by DEP. And so when you keep adding these little bits here, these little, they're supposed to be reducing it, not adding to it. So in the, the map that I'll send to you, um, you can see how big the, the drainage basin is for Crescent Lake. It is huge. There's a lot of agricultural problems too. So they're trying to figure out ways to reduce it, not add to it. So I hope you can you know, communicate and have, have some say so we can keep the water cleaner, not not make it worse. Mr. Pellissier. You s made some mention that Flagler County is already dumping into Crescent Lake. Where is that taking right. place? No, Matanzas River. I thought you said Flagler. Oh, um, Bunnell. Yeah, the treated wastewater goes in. Into Crescent Lake? Yeah, that's what I've read in the reports, yeah. Okay. It's considered, it's in this, this whole... Uh, um, TMDL report I can send to you and you can read about that and you, there's, it's got contact information. You can ask Mary Pollock. Um, she's very familiar with this whole region. She does all the basin management action plans and TMDLs. For all, just, I don't know how she does it, but she knows everything <laughs> about it. Are, are you led to believe that it's the wastewater from the treatment facility in Bunnell that's getting to Crescent Lake? That's what the TMDL report says, yeah. It's quite a ways. I don't, I don't, I'm not denying it yet, but yeah. they're going to prove that one to me. That's a, that's I a just think it would, it would be as, you know, there's more development happening. Um, we just really need to pay attention to what's going where. And there are, um, I hate to say it, but in this political climate, the, you know, the regulations have been reduced and we're kind of back to the 1950s mentality is like, well, just shuffle it around so we can get more jobs and build more buildings, you know. Um, that's kind of where things are going, so I just hope we can stay uh, really in tune with, with what plans are already in place, like the TMDL and the BMAPs and things like that. I mean, there, there are, if, if you're aware of it and take, make some effort, you can say, hey, wait, wait a minute, we can't keep going this direction. Let, one clarification, though, the TDMLs are the daily limits that go in, and most of this language is centered around the 100-year storm. It's what would happen if that's overloaded. And Walton, that's what your, the city of Bunnell is experiencing. We did have that hurricane come right back on us. It would just devastate Lake Crescent. And that's, it is real. It would happen. Commissioner Harris. So. I was just going to say, um, Walton, have you heard anything about that at Regional Planning Council? I have not heard anything. She, um, God, I'm trying to remember, somebody else had contacted me about it. Um, and I told them, no, I hadn't heard anything. But I was under the impression you were saying their wastewater from their treatment plant was going into Crescent Lake, not... I'll Formal. send this report to you that where I got that from and, okay. and see if you're uh, reading it the same way. I mean, I'm, I volunteer with different groups. I go to a lot of meetings and try to learn about what's going on. Um, our, you know, our waterways are compromised and it's easy to not do anything, you know, or spend money. It's very expensive to, to remedy the situations. Uh, so, you know, I could use some help for sure to understand exactly what's going on and what, what's possibly coming in and and making things better, not worse. We have so much going on now on our waterways. Um, I just hate to see them become more compromised if they don't have to. Okay, thank you very much, Alec, for your thank presentation. You, you also had a public meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Could yes. I make just one comment on this please. subject, please? Uh, as one that's kind of have a long view here on this uh, board, uh, and I remember the discussions back when uh, the Mariposa development was discussed and then later when the Walmart distribution was discussed 
and both St. John's and Volusia County had objections to those uh, activities happen because there is capacity in a lot of areas, not only uh, runoff, uh, water withdrawal, uh, wastewater treatment, road capacities, and they were all fighting for that capacity to be reserved for them. So I think it's important that we also fight for the capacity that is reserved for our development because we know we need it here. And whether it's improved residential opportunities or improved commercial opportunities, if we don't fight for those Correct. capacities because they get sucked up right. when they're sitting there. Other people use them. And uh, particularly um, the development that they're talking about right now was one of the reasons that they didn't want Mariposa to happen because there was concurrency issues on Highway 206 and 207. Mm -hmm. And Mariposa would have taken that uh, capacity from the concurrency rules back then, although we don't have those rules now, but it still is a capacity issue. And they didn't want that to happen because they were trying to reserve it for that corridor on 206 between I-95 and 207. So I think it's fair play for us to also turn that back around and say that uh, we're not opposed to success anywhere, but there is limits that then uh, get used that then we don't have any options in our right. county. We need to look at any adverse effect that it would have, and if we snooze, we lose. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. you so much, Clerk, for bringing that um, to the forefront. We had a speaker's card from Ms. Shirley Edwards that was asking about the update on Hunter Road. We asked Public Works to get with her uh, on that so that uh, that can stay on the front burner, which it is, and we'll bring it up again in transportation meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, any other public comments? Robert By Bly. Um, a couple things. I want to thank uh, Chip Libel for all his hard work with the animal shelter. The uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you now, uh, he's really been really been working hard to get things done over there. Well, it, it's really a lot of really good volunteers, Robert. But thank you, <laughs> and um, we're we're trying to come out of the dark ages and go into the light. Now, I I do hear that there are some new things that are coming down the pipeline, and that's a good thing uh, to control our overpopulation, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you for your interest. Um, I would like to welcome Mr. Manning. Thank Appreciate you. uh, your, your coming down to Putnam County to help us get through our legal issues. Uh, a question I, I had, and I don't expect to get an answer because I didn't give you time to adequately prepare, but how is it that we can afford two two lawyers i mean we uh a lot of counties i believe a lot of you have even said that uh, a lot of counties don't even have their own lawyer and and here we are the poorest county and we got two so just want to bring that up so apparently you're not aware of the retirement of mr castleberry and that they do have to have some time so that he can be briefed on his successor can be briefed on the current issues that we have I was aware that he was retiring. Okay, yes. so that answers your question, sir. Okay. Um, something uh, that might be a little confusing. It, it, when when uh, you look at the water flow of the St. Johns River, um, it does flow north. And so when you're thinking about uh, watersheds down south um, or even east, uh, how does that get into Crescent Lake? Well, the way that it gets into Crescent Lake is through Hall Creek, and that's, that's where the basin drains. Hall Creek will flow north, and then Hall Creek flows into Crescent Lake, so that should answer how, how it's able to Technically, get. Technically, it flows into Dead Lake, then into Crescent Lake. Right. But Technically. anyway, that's that's how it goes. It's just a, the river flows north. On that area, so. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Bly. You. Mr. Spells. John Spells, 106 Citrus Lane. I'm still here again to mention about um, Hunter Road. I was out there yesterday, and I see the load of dirt they put on the cemetery road, and I can't understand why y'all keep 
continually putting dirt there instead of taking that 18 inch culvert out that's got water running from a 32 inch culvert and actually it just runs completely over the road then they'll come and dump a bunch and I don't know whether it's got bubble gum in it but it's a clay like base mixture sand I drove through it yesterday and it was just as soft and gushy and then you got Crocker Swamp Road um, I brought it up about six months ago. They had a culvert on that dirt road right behind the racetrack. If you ride down there, it was collapsing in the middle, and somebody took the necessity to stick a plastic culvert inside of that one with the hole in it. Every time it rained, it washed that dirt right out of that um, hole that they keep pushing dirt in, and you got a school bus travel down that, rain, that road. Every time it rained, the runoff from the field runs completely over the top of the road. And then if you're on the far end, it runs all the way down that road. That whole road need to be upgraded at least about a foot and a half. And they need to take that small culvert out, plus that one with the hole in it that they stuck the small one in and put a new culvert in there. Because every time they go there and grade, they take dirt from one end of the road to the other end of the road, and all the time the road's steady dropping. But if you just go out there and look and see what needs to be done and do it right and start patching it, because every time they get rain, all that fresh dirt they bring in get washed in the ditch. Mm -hmm. Then you get another grader come by and pull some more, it get washed in the ditch, and the whole road is actually lower than the ditch along the field. So if you got engineer, you know, if they just do what they're supposed to do, you don't have to keep running back doing the same old thing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Spells. I'm about to close public comments, item four. Item five, the consent agenda. I will read the captions of all of them. Those uh, items that have an asterisk by them means that the administrator or designated uh, director uh, will give an explanation uh, before the um, agenda is um, discussed. Item 5A, list of committee minutes and recommendation distributed to become part of the record. B, list of correspondence distributed to become part of the record. C, administration agreement with Florida Drug Testing Incorporated not to exceed $30,000 for drug screening services for Putnam Adult Drug, drug Court Operation, PADCO. D is library compliance requirement for the Florida Department of State grant agreement for aid to libraries. E, Chamber of Commerce, Tourist Development Council recommendations from September 3rd, 2015. F, General Services, which is a list of surplus inventory. Item G, Administration, General Fund, Emergency Services, Budget Amendment Resolution, $10,000 to record revenue and allow for the expenditure of a donation from the Georgia Pacific Foundation Incorporated to convert a federal surplus property trailer into a mobile command post. H, Administration, Ship Emergency Repair Assistance up to $10,000, Erlene Walker. I, Planning and Development, Resolution Formalizing the Animal Control Advisory Committee. J, Sanitation, Task Order Number 138, Jones Edmund and Associates, $142,085, Landfill Permit Compliance Monitoring Services for Fiscal Year 1516. K, Administration, Ship Annual Closeout Report Certification for Fiscal Year 1213. L, Public Works, Change Order Number 6, Alexander's Landing Incorporated, $25,000. Drayton Island Ferry Operations for October 1st, 2015 through September 30th, 2016. M, Public Works, Change Order Number 3, North Florida Emotions Incorporated, $304,629.55. Subcontracted for 2014 dirt to pave stabilization activities at Dunn's Creek State Park. And this, the source of these funds is a Department of Environmental Protection grant. N, administration addendum number 16, Joan Edmonds and Associates Incorporated, $100,000 preliminary design to expand water system along East River Road. And again, this is a Florida legislative appropriation. O, Sheriff's Department, Florida Department of Transportation Highway Safety Funds grant application, $15,000 for overtime benefits and educational materials for the Putnam County Sheriff's Office seatbelt child restraint enforcement team. P, administration, fee schedule resolution, and exhibits for fiscal year 2015-2016. Commissioners, you should note I, J, M, and N with asterisks. Are there any others that want explanation prior to the discussion? Hearing none, we will Mr. go. Mr. Chairman? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, sir. <laughs> you were kind of whoa. fast there, sir. <laughs> yes, I would sir. like to, um, I wanted to talk about E, and uh, Ms. Jones said that Commissioner Libel could handle that. I can handle that. Okay. okay thank we'll, you. We'll pull E for M and N. We'll, we'll M and N. 
questions already? Asterisk on the MDA, sir. Oh, okay. okay. All righty. Very well. Okay. Um, uh, we'll let you start with E, Mr. Libel. Yes. Um, particular question, Commissioner Harvey? No, just for the public, Commissioner Libel, that I want to know the, um, let the public know what the economic impact is for Putnam County with the um, Bass Tournament. Okay. Um, at the Tourism Development Council um, held last week, we announced a major announcement. In 2016, we will be uh, hosting another Bassmaster <coughs> Elite Series. We will be the only location in all the United States and the southeastern United States, including Georgia, South Carolina, all those places that are hosting one of these qualifiers. Um, basically, what that means is we'll have 100, approximately, of the top bass fishermen in the world right here in Putnam County. We've done two of these. Their bylaws won't let them come here every year. Um, it, they have to give it a break, but every chance they get, they take us up on it because we produce more fans and a better setting for the world television set um, than any of the other locations. There's more interest in the, the series here in Putnam County than anywhere else. I'll give you some figures here. Um, our total room nights, uh, when we get to the total economic impact, 3,483. That's based on double occupancy, of course, sure. and that's for camera crews. And what contributes to that, not only do the anglers show up at the date prescribed, but they come and pre-fish, because there's a lot of money on the line for this thing. It's a huge payday. And the economic outfall for Putnam County, can't, it's our biggest. It's that simple. We're looking at... I, I could go through the whole thing, but when we're all said and done here, this is without a multiplier. This is not money spent outside of food, lodging, and say gas, and that sort of thing. You're at a, a million and a half, Mr. Yep, Harvey. I agree. And then uh, it's been touted that there's a lot more money behind that if you add the multiplier. I think you're getting into the millions again. I don't know the exact, that's a Dana question. Um, but this thing's huge for us. Our downtown Palatka area is going through their uh, renovations on the waterfront. It ought to all be ready for that time. ESPN really likes us because we have underground utilities running all through the riverfront parks down there. So it's not a lot of work for them. They don't have to come in a month ahead and lay all this stuff out like they do in some of the other locations. So we do bass, bass tournaments well in Putnam we County. Do. And this is the granddaddy of them all, and it brings a lot of money, and we're, I'm really proud to announce that. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Pellissier. Just to caveat off that, um, after the last time we hosted this uh, event, I was at the, um, the kickoff dinner the night before for the fishermen, and uh, then I worked the parking the next morning, and I talked to one of our local heroes, uh, Troy Scroggins, and I, or t uh, Terry, I'm sorry. Terry, you Terry. better win. I, I, I get my, get my Scroggins as crisscross. <laughs> and I asked him, do we really shine that greatly compared to all the other locations in the U.S. where y'all travel? He said, by far. And, and he's a hometown boy. I said, well, tell me the truth, because if we're doing something wrong that we need to fix, we don't know how to do it if we don't know it's broken. He said, y'all treat us and this entire group like kings. He said, we, we, they, they all talk about loving to come to Palatka the way we treat them and what we do for them when they're here. So we're doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. there, no Our doubt. media value just from ESPN is worth oh, half Lord. a million dollars. Absolutely. Oh, that's that's free worldwide. It really is, and it drives those uh, freshwater fishermen back to our local fish camps, which they're all going through renovations now. We've got renegades we just worked with and some of them that are really coming up, and we're going to the next phase of, of uh, tournament fishing in Florida. The biggest industry, of course, surrounds the coastline where 80% of our population lives, and saltwater tournaments are huge, but they're the two biggest in, inland in state is Lake Okeechobee is one, Putnam County is two, and ironically, you got Lake Okeechobee and Lake George is the two biggest lakes in the state also. Right. So, and all our tributaries and the Saint, mighty St. John's River provide for all this, and this, this is where we're taking a natural resource and, and using it to our advantage, the way it should be. Just, and, just a little bit more to add that. Um, I, I do now thinking about it. Um, Cliff Prince, one of our local heroes, also he, 
he same thing. He got, I, I got to him individually, and they both gave me the same thing, that we, we, we are the number one spot. He said the bass fishermen talk about when are we going back to Putnam. They call Plaka. us Jurassic Park of the circus. <laughs> Nowhere else do they catch bass this big. <laughs> Stacy, you're looking at us kind of funny, Mr. Turner. Oh, no, I'm just thinking about the bass, and I'm I, I can see that. Boat. I can see that. <laughs> you're going to love this. this, um, yeah. this but that's, yeah. that's my announcement. Commissioner Harvey, thank you thank for you. Thank taking you. it off okay. the Senate. Yeah. Thank you for big deal. Drilling, drilling down on it, and I'm sure that the closer we get to time that um, we're going to have more and more to share. Okay, planning and development, uh, just a little bit of discussion about the resolution formalizing the Animal Control Advisory Committee. Is that you or is that? I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's been some comments in the past uh, expressing a little bit of a concern about the lack of formalization relative to the Animal Control Advisory Committee. A uh, resolution has been prepared by planning and development that would uh, actually formalized the Animal Control Advisory Committee, suggested to consist of uh, nine members uh, initially appointed for staggered terms uh, that thereafter would allow for regular appointments of them uh, to consist of uh, three-year terms uh, on a regular basis. Uh, that that nine-member committee would uh, consist of, uh, generally consist of, uh, be suggested to consist of people who are uh, have knowledge of animals, uh, veterinarians, animal behaviorists, or farmers who are familiar with uh, large animals or other, other individuals who might uh, uh, have a gr great interest in, in animals and uh, animal control services. So uh, this would be an advisory committee in nature uh, to advise the board on matters relative to animal control. So this resolution would formally establish the Animal Control Advisory Committee. Okay. Hey, just before you move forward, Mr. Haven, uh, you had a question on this particular item. Uh, you've heard the explanation. Is it anything else you need to know about item J? Oh, I'm sorry, J. We'll get to J next. Thank you. Well, item J is a task order for Jones Evans and Associates for the uh, landfill permit compliance monitoring services for the upcoming fiscal year. Those monitoring services consist of two semi-annual sampling and testing of groundwater and surface water at the central landfill, uh, both the active and closed cells, the same at the Huntington closed landfill, and the preparation of compliance monitoring reports to DEP as are required by law. Uh, this would not be a one-time service that would be paid out, uh, would be paid out over the course of the year, but uh, it's an engineering service that uh, has been provided on an annual basis for a number of years as required by our permit under issued by DEP. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Haven, if you would come forward for your question. Uh, on this item, I see there's going to be four tests on the Huntington landfill. No, yeah, five tests, actually. Two semi-annual water uh, groundwater, two semi-annual surface water, and one annual gas condensation thing. Um, I remember just in recent history, it cost us $83,000 for testing out there at the Huntington landfill. I mean, how long are the tests and all this stuff going to go on with the landfill? As long as there is a landfill. Pardon? As long as there is a landfill, it's going to continue to go on. It's going to happen as long as Putnam County owns a landfill and operates it. I suppose, I'm wondering, here we're trying to reduce landfill costs and the cost of citizens, and I'm sure when this 142000 is part of that cost rolled into the landfill that we're paying for. Um, is there somebody else that might be able to do these tests cheaper? I mean, every time we turn around, <clears throat> uh, we see Jones Edmonds is doing something for the county and the, the fees just seem exorbitant. Do we get a, a somebody else bidding on what it's gonna cost or they just get all the contracts? Well, it's not just to get on the contract, uh, the type of contract that we have with them, uh, the contract is properly vetted, but when you're dealing with this type of a contractor, you don't switch them out every year. I mean, you, you certainly have to have some continuity uh, in the professional services that are provided 
under the work scope uh, that you have here. Otherwise, you got to have people mobil mobilization has to take place each time you switch horses midstream. Mr. Leary can drill down on that a little further if necessary. Yeah, but you're, you're paying 142000 for seven tests? Well, I mean, it's not a blood test at the laboratory at the local hospital. I mean, it's, it's uh, a specialized uh, test. Uh, the prices that Jones Edmonds are charging is competitive, and it is based upon reasonable fees for the type of services that they are providing. <clears throat> I think it's absorbent. Thank you so much for your opinion, sir. All right, we will move forward to the next item, which would be item M. Uh, item M, sir, is a, is a change order to an existing uh, contract. Uh, this particular change order is required due to the fact uh, that, if I can refresh your memories a little bit, uh, several months back, uh, a representative from the Friends of Dunn Creek came before you and prevailed upon you to uh, undertake a contract with DEP that would enable uh, DEP to uh, have an entrance road at the Duns Creek State Park uh, added to that facility. Uh, there were, we thought, options for DEP to uh, enter into a contract independently and the state of Florida could handle this themselves. However, uh, as it turned out, they wanted to and preferred to uh, uh, enter into a contract with the county, which we executed in March of 2015, uh, to uh, have the, our existing uh, contractor uh, do this work uh, merely as an accommodation to DEP. So that's why we're having to go through the process of uh, uh, adding this change order to that contract and extend the contract date to December the 18th, 2015 in order that work can be done satisfactory to DEP at the, at the Duns Creek Park. All of this work is, uh, of course, being provided for through a DEP grant uh, as reflected in the agreement executed in March of 2015. Thank you, Mr. Libo. Uh, Mr. Leary, um, as far as uh, the warranty of this work and, and any future warranties or anything to do with it, is the county responsible beyond this contract when it's completed? Well, there's a performance bond associated with it, and I would think, I mean, <clears throat> from an administrative perspective, if DEP finds any uh, deficiencies in the work moving forward uh, under that performance bond, what we will do is encourage them to discuss that with the contractor. I mean that very well. So that that's what my whole question. Will that if we got to that point, will that be on one? Technically, on one? we're the contract, but we're going to encourage them to discuss it with the party that did the work. Very well. I, I just I don't think we should be responsible. I don't think so either, and that's why we wanted to avoid this contract altogether. But unfortunately, uh, you know, it didn't turn out that way. We we're dealing with a lot of sand out there. Um, I'm not a fan of this process, but obviously I'm not an expert either. Somebody sees good in it, but um. I, I just suspect we might have trouble down the road on this, and I sure don't want us in the middle of it. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I, I concur. Um, I sent you an email yesterday, Mr. Leary, about my concerns about this, and you expressed your same sentiment. Um, are we going to be doing the testing now that we have the boring machines and all? Because I, I, I do not want to see us, no? I, I don't think we have any intention of doing that. The work, the work that's being done uh, is being done at the behest of DEP and being done according to their instructions to the, the con, not, I hesitate to say the contractor because we are technically the contractor because we entered into the agreement with DEP, but, but DEP is the, is the entity that prescribed what they wanted done out there and they have conveyed that directly to the to the entity performing the work. Would it be prudent for us to contact DEP and let them know of our past problems? Uh, perhaps it would be, yes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rick Haven. The $304,629.25, is that county funds or is that a grant? It's a total grant from DEP. 100% state. So it's not our money? No, sir. 
Well, it is, but not. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. My next question is, it seems like every time we have a, a, a contractor doing work, whether it's the jail or, or road work, uh, after the contract's sent out, then we have contingency things. Is this uh, extra $18,000 not considered in the original contract, or has there been a change in how much road is going to be done? It's a change order that DEP itself agreed to pay for in work that they wanted to have performed by the, the entity doing the road work, and they've agreed to pay for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Uh, Mr. Leary, item P, uh, fee schedule resolution and exhibits. Uh, we have a comment card from Mr. Tim Hotelling. If you'll come and tell us precisely what part of that you would like us to address. Did you want some comment on N as well? Sir? You had N, I think, as well that you wanted some comment on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Let's do N and stand by one second. Well, N is, as if you will recall, we received, the county received a legislative appropriation of $250,000 for the preliminary design and permitting of the extension of a water line down East River Road. Uh, the state is not, they're a little bit slow in processing the formal agreements uh, because there's a lot of them around the state, I presume, but what they've done, they've authorized us to go ahead and proceed to initiate that work. Uh, and that they will reimburse us for uh, costs incurred after July the 1st, which of course we're certainly past that date now, uh, and they'll get the agreements to us formally uh, in, in coming weeks. Uh, so this $100,000 is merely to get the contractor started on that work, so hopefully the work can be pretty well completed uh, and in place and allow our, uh, and allow our uh, lobbyists to uh, pursue construction funds in the upcoming uh, session of the legislature. So this is just to get them started. Mr. Lala. Paid for by the legislative appropriation. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Leary. But that, that my question leads from those funds we're talking about. I understand phase one, two through this design and where it's going, but we started from Yelvington with a pipe, both sewer and water, and we went down the eastern side of 17 south uh, will, will that come into phase, become phase three, or will any monies be secured out of this uh, effort to fund primarily the, uh, we had Dr. Smith from the veterinarian no. equipment. No, we're, sir. We're going to be short of that. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, all, the, all that money has been exhausted. Okay. So we got to find future monies to complete that task. All right. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Barry Kelly. Okay. <clears throat> Item P, Mr. Tim Hotelling. Good day, I'm Tim Hotelling, San Mateo. Um, I apologize, I put in a request to speak on the previous matter also. The uh, change order three on, out at uh, Duns Creek Park. Um, to my knowledge, we only have one inspector that covers asphalt uh, roads to uh, verify it and to put it all together, although we got a couple new guys that are helping. Mr. Manning would do real well to pay attention to what went on in the past history on this matter, and I'm wondering why we're doing favors for DEP uh, when we don't have adequate resources to, to um, quality control, especially on contractors that have a known demonstrated track record of things that in my estimation he should go to jail for but um, going on to item P I would just like to bring to your attention that uh, that fee schedule includes uh, the tipping fees and all of that stuff that y'all talked about earlier and you might want to um, do whatever you have to do to pull that out of order because you just made a, a decision earlier today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I would like to answer one of the questions um, that he asked about. Um, the Duns Creek State Park has a terrific citizen service organization, a CSO. Uh, Sam Carr is one of the 
ones that serves on it. And we think that it, if they weren't there, they have spent a lot of time putting the dirt road in that's there, building a kiosk, uh, promoting that park. That park would just sit there forever, I think, if we didn't have the active group of CSO citizens giving of their time and raising money and doing what they can. And so they asked to have that road paved. And they came to us and they asked us, would we help with that contract? Um, you know, and so it was DEP and the Citizen Service Organization. So it's for the benefit of our citizens and to have that park become something and to have improvements. Yes, I, I wholeheartedly agree. My only point is, if you spend a lot of money on bad product and you end up having to face the same problems over again because you have to rebuild the same thing in, in a hot second rather than 20 years, it's sort of counterproductive. Has, ha, has nothing to do with what you say and I, I yay, yay, yay. But, uh, <laughs> Okay, you uh, wondered when, why when, we were when, doing... When people are s supposed to have a, a record of supposedly building roads that don't build roads, and you pay them to build roads, it's foolish to pay them to build some more roads okay. unless you got somebody to watch to make sure that they build the roads. I think you will find out that the date of that contract precedes any issues that were brought to our attention. Mr. Leary, you wanted to share something? Yes, sir. Uh, relative to item P and the fees and charges schedule, uh, to Mr. Hotelling's comment, uh, it, we do need to uh, delete from that fees and charges schedule Exhibit 1. Uh, that, that is not, number one, that's not the correct fees and charges for solid waste. And number two, I think that's already been adopted by the solid waste district, so I don't think it needs to be incorporated in this anyway. Okay, so Exhibit I, Exhibit so I on page uh, 136. Just take out one, page 136, Mr. Chair. It, it, yes, one page, page 136, right. Okay. It needs to be deleted. All right. Exhibit I, solid waste special assessment tip and fees need to be deleted from this um, approval, is what you're saying? Correctly. Okay. Any further discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Chairman, on this current packet that we're working on, uh, item P, uh, page 111, um, I sent, contacted Mr. Hammond yesterday. We had a real estate agent who contacted me who was very upset that there would be a phone charge, well, a charge of $35 to answer a question on the phone. And Mr. Hammonds, I'd like to ask you to come up, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, yes, and address that situation for our public to know uh, what the actual answer to that is. And I believe the uh, case that you're speaking about is that the question is not a question that can be answered on the phone. It's something that requires additional work in order to do that. So as I think I told you in an email yesterday, we don't, we try not to make any specific determination at all on the phone. We ask people to come in and see us, make an appointment, because usually it takes some time to do some research to answer the questions that most people have. I think her concern was just if there was a codes case on it and her uh, employer has given her minimal time to get this answered and, and that's why I said to you maybe we could just put it on the internet for the public to see and she could pull it up herself. And we could have told her whether there was a code case or not but we could not have told her the amounts of any liens or okay. you know, current uh, accrued amounts. So I got that same call, and I think all she wanted to know was, is there, didn't want to know what it was, just is there a codes case, period. And again, it just depends on who's available, who can answer that. There's a small group, a uh, small handful of people in the department that can actually answer that question. But there's no charge for answering that question if there's no, a codes case? there's not. Okay. Thank you. Right. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Proper motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like saying, hearing none, motion carries. Okay. Please item I. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The record should reflect that the uh, I, exhibit I, uh, in under administration fee schedule resolution is an exclusion. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Commissioner Harris. Item six, Mr. Ed McClellan, 
request to name new jail expansion area in honor of late Sheriff E. Walton Pellicer, Sr. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, I knew Walt Pellicer for many years uh, when I was a child and uh, as the director of Road Heaver Boys Ranch. And I just found that he is probably one of the most outstanding public servants that I've ever known. And I feel like it would be most appropriate that uh, Putnam County honor him. He was the second oldest, longest, not old, longest serving sheriff in the state of Florida. And uh, he brought much recognition to uh, our county. He was the president of the National Sheriff's Association as well as the Florida Sheriff's Association on many occasions. So I don't know what the procedure is to name it, but uh, I would certainly recommend it. I guess Walter would have to recuse himself because uh, he might but, be kin but, to him. Is but that he what knows you? how well his father did, and I think it's <laughs> a, whatever you have to do to do it, I hope you will. Any Thanks, Jim. Yes, sir. However honored I am by Mr. McClellan's uh, a recommendation. Uh, I feel appropriate that uh, any future discussions or decisions uh, related to this issue that I will have to sit out. But I'm I'm very honored, Mr. McCollum. Thank you. Is that it? I might have to sit out too. He locked me up one time. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you all it? of us might have that problem. <laughs> Did you deserve uh, it, Commissioner? I agree with everything you said. All right. <laughs> no, all right. that is a joke. <laughs> I don't know what the procedure is, Mr. Chairman, because I can't make a motion, but I sure hope you all do it quick. Thank you. All right. I'm not sure what the procedures are to name a public facility in honor of uh, an individual, but I'm sure that if you provide the, uh, the resume, I know you mentioned some things, and I'm sure that that would be easily accessible. Um, I think it'll go through a process. It needs to certainly be vetted uh, through uh, an open public process because anytime you're naming a facility in honor of or in memory of or in any way, shape, form or fashion, we want to make sure that it's properly vetted and um, we will refer back to the administrator as well as our attorney to, uh, I guess, come up with a procedure because, again, who knows whether any other citizen think that another name should be there. And so we don't want to name it and, and then have to go through a process of unnaming well, it. Mr. Chairman, I could, I'd like to make, uh, uh, well, ask if we can get it on the next uh, scheduled workshop, Mr. Leary, for discussion. Okay. That sounds, that right, sounds like you. a plan. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. We have a 955 proposed road clo closing public hearing. And... Uh, According to the, uh, the clock, is well past 9.55, uh, but there's a resolution uh, vacating a portion of Paul Drive, interlocking Lake Estates, Dunham Woods, Unit 18. Is there any setup time required uh, for that at all, or just what we have before us? This is a public hearing. Do we have individuals that are here specifically uh, for uh, the issue on uh, Paul Drive? Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Mullins. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. <laughs> Jakobovich, if you will present the case. All right, good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is a little bit unusual. It, we have a road that everybody on the road wants us to vacate. Um, <laughs> we got a request to, to vacate a portion of Paul Drive. Um, all of the residents that live there all have access on other roads, so they don't need this road. And you can see in your package there are uh, pictures of the road, it does exist, it's a, like a single lane dirt road. Um, we have no problem because it, it generally just serves the residents who have asked us to vacate the road. Uh, there was one provision that they each get us a, uh, a, a clay electric utility easement, which they have. And with that, um, staff recommends vacating that. And what would happen is we, we um, is our, um, estimate that each of the owners who have asked for us to vacate it would then receive those portions of the road adjacent to their properties. Mm -hmm. This is an open public hearing. Do we have any citizens, um, again, that have any concerns, direct or indirect, on this project? Mr. Mullins, are you for or against this? 
just teasing you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jakubowicz, looking at the map, the last page of what you gave us, on the west side of the properties, is that a road? It's just an or book and page listed. Yes, there is a road there. So that is a mm -hmm. county road. Okay, thanks. Just want to make sure it wasn't an easement and we were giving them, you know, less access than what they had. Okay, does our legal department have any concerns? Seeing none? Yes, sir. Hearing none. What is the pleasure of this commission? Public hearing is closed, commissioners? Ex parte sure. is. Is, is there a need to go through ex parte on this? Yes, he said there's no. not. The attorney said no, so I'm going to take his advice. Okay, good. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that second. we. Second. All right. Proper motion and a second. <laughs> Further discussion? <laughs> Further discussion? I was going to make the motion. All right. I'm sorry. District 5. Yes. District 4? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 3? Yes. Okay. Code enforcement, John Salman, senior planner. For code enforcement cases, case 9A, and, uh, number 9A on the agenda, fine reduction request 2013-00516-1503 Barton Road, Catherine Deal. Is anyone here representing uh, this case, 1503 Barton Road? No, her son lives in Texas. Okay. He, uh, there's an email attached to this that uh, he sent uh, previously. Property was first seen on October 9, 2013. The house was deemed unsafe. There was also a care premises issue. Uh, the owner, uh, Mrs. Dill, was in the nursing home at the time. Uh, notice of violation hearing was sent out on April 10, 2014. The special magistrate heard the case on June 19, 2015, and he found the property to be in violation. He gave the owner until, uh, actually June 19, 2014, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, uh, give the owner until July 30th to uh, bring the property in compliance or a $25 fine day would commence. At some point in that uh, time period, Mr. Dill died. Uh, the case went back before the special magistrate on September 18th, 2014, and he found the property to still be in violation and ordered the lien to be attached. Uh, Mr. Paul Dill, her son, in called and indicated that they were uh, in probate with the uh, the uh, issue of the house, and uh, he was frustrated uh, because he felt that the husband uh, should have been responsible for taking care of the problem, but Ms. Dill owned the property on her own. Uh, once through probate, uh, Mr. Dill uh, had the uh, property demolished and cleaned up with permits. He requested a fine reduction hearing um, the issue was uh, went before the special magistrate, uh, and he recommended the county accept $976 in lieu of $9,890.50 uh, fine plus $100 administrative fee if it's paid within 90 days. The $976 is the amount uh, of uh, cost that the county has in it. Thank you, Mr. Salmons. We have a recommendation from the special magistrate and the staff that we accept the $976 in lieu of the $9,890.50 plus a $100 administrative fee. What is the pleasure of this commission? So Mr. move approval, Mr. Proper Chair. Proper motion. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. <coughs> Next fine reduction requ request, 2004. 01182 106M Court, Patricia Singleton. Is there anyone here representing this case? Ma'am, please just come a little bit closer uh, while the case is being presented. Uh, this property was first seen on December 14th, 2004. There was a large amount of trash and debris, cars, boats, and appliances on the property. A uh, notice of violation was sent on on December 17th, 2004, which gave the owner 60 days to come into compliance. Uh, nothing much happened. The case went before the special magistrate on April 20th, 2016, and he gave the owner until June 26, 2006. I keep trying to make it. 2016, <laughs> that was quite an extension. 2006. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Singleton, who was Mrs. Essex at the time, uh, was separated from her husband, and she started paying the administrative fee a little bit at a time. Uh, Ms. Singleton uh, removed a significant amount of trash and debris over the next several months. 
Uh, most of the problem was resolved, but there was still a large piece of heavy equipment on the property. Uh, the bank started foreclosure proceedings, uh, we were told, and evidently Miss Singleton resolved that issue with the bank because uh, she still owns it. And she uh, got the property in compliance, requested a fine reduction. The issue went before the special magistrate and he recommended uh, that the county accept $800. Uh, the uh, actual costs were $900, but uh, after discussion with uh, Ms. Singleton, uh, both uh, the special magistrate and staff concurred that $800 uh, was uh, appropriate. Uh, in lieu of the $83,550 fine if it's paid within 90 days, and she is here. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Samuels. Ms. Singleton, if you would just come forward, please be at ease. We just have a couple of questions. I want you to verify that you are who we say we think you are. You are Ms. Patricia Singleton? Yes, sir. Okay, Ms. Singleton, do you agree with the summary highlights that was presented by Mr. Salmons? Yes, sir. Do you have any objections to the recommended action? No, sir. Okay. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the commission? We have a recommended action that the county concur with the recommendation of the special magistrate and accept $800 in lieu of the $83,550 fan if paid within 90 days, which is December the 21st, 2015. What's the pleasure of this commission? Mr. Move Chairman, approve. I move approval. Sorry. Second. Okay, we have a proper motion and a second. <laughs> Further discussion? It's my day. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Like sign, hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Simons. Singleton, for thank you. You. cleaning thank that Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry that you had to go through all you had to go through to get to where you are, but thank you. <laughs> Mr. Salmons, thank you for your presentation uh, as well. And stop hitting them extra zeros on the, the uh, uh, <laughs> okay, county administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't really have anything other than the appointments, but I believe Mr. Overturf wanted to have a word about the uh, appointment to the canvassing board. All right, supervisor of election, Mr. Overturf, if you'll come forward. Just real briefly, uh, first off, I just wanted to welcome Mr. Manning. I uh, look forward to working with you during the next election cycle. I also want to make sure that Mr. Castleberry knows how much the elections office appreciates all his work over the last several years. Uh, he's, he's been a very knowledgeable man. He also has a good demeanor about him. It makes all of us at the elections office feel uh, very comfortable when he's been with us. And uh, I know that my previous uh, predecessor felt the same way. So Russ, I appreciate it and just wish you and Terry the best in retirement. So the other item that I wanted to mention to you was what he just mentioned about that it is time for us to determine which one of you will be our uh, commissioner for the canvassing board. And we also by law have to appoint an alternate uh, as we've done in the last couple of years. Uh, the reason I wanted to mention just for a couple of seconds about it is the fact that next year is our busiest year by far. Uh, we have the three big elections next year, so you're looking at 22 to 25 meetings that you'll need to be at, at least the actual member, the, the alternate doesn't unless the member can't be there. But I just wanted to mention that to you so that as you're thinking about who wants to do it, that it is an undertaking besides all the other meetings that you all have uh, and the obligations that you have to do. We also have uh, coming up uh, the first or the second week of uh, January, uh, a required meeting that we have to go to down in Orlando and I've already got Mr. Manning's application and I'll send in yours once we get whoever the alternate and the actual member is so there's a lot of things that we've got coming up that'll hit really quick here starting the first of next year and I just wanted to approach you all and give you time to mark whoever on the calendar so that you've got time to prepare for that uh, item also so uh, if you have any questions fine if not that'll be it but I do just want to want to thank Walton for his service too uh, he's been very uh, diligent and being there and being making all the meetings and, and it does add to it because if there's three members and one of them's out and then you have a controversy then there's no way to, to make a decision because of it so thank you I did enjoy that by the way that was a very learning experience I highly awesome. recommend one question I have, Mr. Overturf, is it still at the Florida Mall next to the Brazilian Steakhouse? No. I don't want it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the Cara Caribbean or something like that. They they move it. Uh, Do they? Yeah, oh, type deal. But, uh, two years ago, I think we were there, weren't we, Nancy? Yeah. Well, that's a little we caveat were. you got. You yeah. Besides your meeting, you could just walk right out of the meeting room into this giant mall, and it is giant. Right. That was pretty neat. But cool. right. anyhow, so, all good things must come to an end. <laughs> right. 
Thank you. Commissioner Harris? You had any comments I don't. on that? What did you say? You want to talk some more about that? No, I'm okay with that. Okay, uh, what, what timeline do you want those people named? We know a couple of people don't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has to be a person that's not on the ballot. Yeah. So. That's right. Yeah. Well, Mr. Overture, what's the timeline? You need the name? Uh, Names. The sooner the better, so that whoever gets that time, uh, if, especially if you want to go down the night before, then I've got uh, time to make reservations and stuff. Of course, they want the applications in as soon as we can, just so that the organization knows how many are coming from all over the state. And, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. So I don't, I'm not saying it has to be today, but we're going to get some good names from you all. See him jumping up and down, volunteering for it. <laughs> I'd, like I'd love to do it, but that's up to the board. I have no problem you with it. Alternate. Yeah. I could be the alternate. Just get it over with. Yeah. Yeah. Nominate yeah. Mr. Harvey to be the primary and Mr. Liable to be the alternate. Yeah, second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none. Motion carries. You're done. Okay. Are, are there any other appointments? <clears throat> we have. Um, oh, yes, I do. Okay. Sorry. Um, on the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee, I spoke with Margaret Zahner, and she's willing to continue serving. So I make a motion we reappoint her. I have a her. motion to um, reappoint Ms. Margaret Zahner. Second that. Second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And you are working on the employer representative. Yes. Okay. Better place. Likewise, don't have anybody yet. He working. Okay, Mr. Administrator, anything else? No, sir. I have nothing else. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to the county attorney. Order me. Uh, Let's start with the new, and then we'll go to the old. Um, I don't have anything additional to add, other to uh, other than. Um, uh, let's know that Mr. Castleberry um, does need to address um, a, uh, a mediation um, event that was held recently, and I'll let him take it from there. Okay, uh, Mr. Castleberry, we didn't mean to call you old as in age uh, <laughs> there, but I mean, you know, some people get fine with age anyway, so. No, no offense taken. All right. Mr. Sir. Chairman, this item that the board's very familiar with is uh, asking the board for authority to uh, accept a settlement we reached at mediation a few weeks ago in Orlando. Actually, Mr. Manning took a vacation day from his job in Osceola and attended the mediation with us. Uh, it relates to the mining contract at the central landfill. Uh, uh, by way of a little bit of background, when, we, when the county first decided to enter into or, or to actually mine that old uh, landfill, uh, Jones Edmonds estimated that the project would cost us about $2.9 million. We went out for bid. The bid, the low bid was approximately $2 million, but we need to keep in mind that most of that $2 million was based on a unit price, a series of unit price items because we did not know what we would encounter when we dug into that old landfill. Uh, so we had a $2 million bid and an estimated cost of 2.9. As the project progressed, the contractor encountered a lot more special waste than was anticipated, which drove the uh, volume up and the cost up. Uh, special waste meaning primarily tires and white goods. Uh, the estimate for tires was 100 tons, and I think there was closer to 6,000 tons of tires discovered. Uh, the other claim related to the fact that in the landfill, the top layer w uh, was what they call clean soil. That's very easy. The contractor digs it out, puts it in a pile. Mr. Gas can use it for daily fill, et cetera. They encountered a whole lot less clean soil than anticipated and a whole lot more reclaimed soil and a actual uh, solid waste. So we went to meet, we knew, we knew, uh, early on in the contract that uh, we were going to owe the contractor money. Uh, at mediation, the contractor claimed $1.7 million uh, in addition to the contract price. We were able to mediate it down to $775,000. 
which if you add the 775 to the $2 million contracts, 2,775, which is still less than the original estimate of 2.9 by, by Jones Edmonds. So it was simply a matter of it was a unit price contract. We knew that there was going to be a true up or a reconciliation at the end of the contract based on the actual volumes encountered. Uh, it could just as easily gone the other way if they had discovered less special waste and more clean soil, we'd be doing a change order to reduce the contract price. However, this is the way it came out, but we knew all along there would be a true up. So uh, we have tempted, we have uh, accepted, we agreed at mediation to pay the $775,000 subject to the board approval. And Mr. Gast and I and Mr. Manning and Mr. Leary recommend that you authorize and accept the $775,000 payment that we agreed to, tentatively agreed to at mediation. And I can answer any questions. Thank you, have. Council. I want to certainly commend Jones Edmonds on the front side for uh, knowing up front, you know, what it would possibly be. And then because of the unit pricing, uh, understanding at the end that there would be reconciliation or truing that would take place. Uh, there, I think it says a lot about uh, the quality services that we, we get from Jones Edmonds uh, there. And then when I go back over to administration, uh, both Mr. Leary and Mr. Gass, uh, along with our council, um, Castleberry and Manning, um, I don't know what magic wand you waved, but I think it was certainly commendable that uh, you were able to let them know uh, that Putnam County did the homework uh, there and so the negotiations through the mediation to me is, is, is something that we all should applaud uh, because we could easily uh, be sitting in a courtroom and waiting on someone who knows nothing about what the landfill operations uh, uh, required in order to get this done. So I want to applaud you. Any other hey, commissioner comments? And let me just add one other thing now that you mentioned it. It's, it's in my memo. I, in my opinion, if we do not accept the settlement and we would proceed to litigation, our exposure would be in the $1 million to $1.7 million range and that we would be responsible for uh, the contractor's attorney's fees also, which would be huge. And uh, the, the only thing they would need to do in order to have us responsible to pay their attorney's fees is to get some sort of judgment. It could be as little as 500,000 or so, we would still have to pay their attorneys. My estimation, we would owe a million to a million seven and would definitely owe their attorney's fees also. Mm. As a they would be the prevailing party. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Ms. Harris. I want to echo what you had to say about the excellent job they did of negotiating that. That's actually less than half right. of what they were asking. And um, they just put a lot of thought into it and they were well prepared and uh, with Joan Sedsman's assistance. And I just think they deserve an attaboy. That's right. Concur. And, and an applause. Absolutely. Absolutely. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. Um, attorney, thank you very well for the work you've done. Um, I was excited when we met, and I asked you if the checks were already written, just waiting for a signature to go on them. So um, I wholeheartedly support this, and I appreciate it. Mr. Pellicier. Uh, same sentiments, um, absolutely. Um, savings to the county, no doubt. Mr. Lyman. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Boudreaux. I know you worked hard on this and Jones Edmond also, but one thing that wasn't mentioned is the reason for mining, um, not only to gain that landfill space, but to get the benzene levels in that water table down. And that appears to have worked. And I thank you very much. We're coming out of the dark side again into the light mm -hmm. on something that was just ignored for a long period of time. And Mr. Gast, I thank you, your leadership there. And, um, you know, even through this, this, meeting this morning we are going forward with this landfill and getting it into uh, prosperity I hope thank you so much this, this chairman would like to entertain a motion uh, so move approval of the um, mediation report. mediation report second, second. Oops, sorry we have a proper motion and a second that the uh, mediation report with the uh, settlement um, be approved and authorized further discussion district four Yes. District 2. Yes. District 5. Yes. District 1. Yes. District 3. Yes. Unanimous. Thank you Thank so you, much. Chairman. Okay. The Honorable Clerk of Court, Tim Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just 
did want to mention, I, I'm sorry that Mr. Jones isn't here today, but uh, uh, he in the finance office was awarded the, an annual uh, recognition for outstanding financial reporting. Uh, this is a yearly process that uh, our uh, comprehensive annual financial report is uh, judged by an independent uh, review board and it was de deemed to be um, of outstanding quality. Uh, this is an award that this county has uh, received for over 30 years um, prior to when I was here, but when uh, Mr. Anderson was our finance director, uh, he also received that, and since then, Mr. Jones has been able to receive that. So uh, it demonstrates the um, uh, transparency and the uh, uh, character of that report that's put out uh, for uh, consumption, uh, not only by you, but the citizens. So I wanted to, to congratulate him uh, once again on receiving that award. And other than that, I have no other items. I declare I thought I saw him at this meeting earlier, unless it was two weeks ago. He was here earlier. Okay, all right, I want to make sure. <laughs> he was, but we're at year end, close out, and gotcha. he, he was busy. Understand, yeah. understand, well, just for him to be here. And, 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 a, and a segue from that, um, I can't say enough about, again, the professional skills that, that Mike Anderson used and how he handles his office and how sincere he is about what he do uh, there. He's uh, kind of the man behind the scenes, uh, soft-spoken to a degree, except we had a couple of times that he was able to uh, get his blood pressure up a little. And, uh, but uh, thank you for what you do. I know this time of year, and especially when we start the visioning process and the budget process of, of you and the administrator working together to really present to us what we need and, and giving us the reality report because, you know, the pie in the sky just don't work. So, but thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Honorable Smith. Uh, Commissioner Harvey, anything else? I'd just like to mention last Saturday we had a day on the lake, Save Robin Reservoir did, and uh, we brought out legislators. Congressman Yoho was in attendance and um, took him on a tour of the lake, and we had a really good time out there. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Libel for the donation he made of some uh, presents for the kids out there, and um, we uh, also mentioned that everybody was different places that day, and I understand that. Um, and we told them how much the board supports that organization. I mean that the Lake Okawaha. So just want to let you know that tonight, if you see my orange and blue tie, that means that there's a Gator Club meeting um, here at the golf course. Yes. And if you're a, in attendance tonight and a Gator fan, there will be a special state award given to Putnam County Gator Club tonight. So no Seminoles allowed. Yeah, they can come. Okay. <laughs> Don't like the colors, that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Commissioner Pellissier. I have nothing to bring forward. <laughs> Commissioner Harris. Um, Mr. Chairman, we, uh, as you know, we have been fighting to try to keep ride solution going since that's our only transportation in Putnam County, other than individual cars, but it's very important to a lot of people. And um, the funding is the big issue, keeping it going. And something that um, my committee has suggested that we do is look into the Suwannee River Economic Council. They receive approximately a million dollars in funding on behalf of Putnam County to supply services. And it's services to the elderly and it includes transportation. We get reports from them, but they're very difficult to read. They're about that thick and they include all the counties that they represent. And with your permission, I would like to invite them to appear before us at a meeting and explain to us exactly what do they do. Thank what do they do with Putnam County's money? How many people do they serve? What services are there? Okay. So I'd like to issue a formal invitation, maybe through you, Mr. Chairman, and ask them to come and just tell us what they do and how many people that helps and okay. uh, I that think would, it's long overdue. That would be wonderful. I would Break certainly be pleased to uh, to send that correspondence out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Lyle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last Saturday, uh, while Larry was uh, doing the, the chore for the county at Rodman Reservoir, Lake Okawaha, I got the pleasure of representing the board at the Lee Conley House, our uh, domestic violence shelter's uh, annual golf tournament. It was a hard job, but somebody had to do it. <laughs> and, uh, anyhow, it was a good day. It was the first time it hadn't rained in quite a few weeks, and we got a whole day of sunshine, and the golfers really showed up. They had a successful day, and uh, it was uh, 
really a, a, a good time and they raise a lot of money for the cause and um, I'm very pleasured to represent the board there. Thank you so much. Let me uh, make some concluding remarks. We will go in recess in just a few moments because we will be back at 5.05 uh, p.m. for the uh, final uh, second reading and on the um, resolution adopting the final levy for the ad valorem taxes and adopting the final budget and also approving the uh, five-year capital plan. Uh, but I want to just drill down for just a moment on what I would call healthy and elaborate debate and deliberation earlier in this meeting. Uh, the civility that we've been preaching and pledging uh, certainly was demonstrated uh, in this meeting. Uh, I don't want to ever come across to our citizens or my colleagues as suppressing um, your voice. Um, certainly, I, I try to humbly uh, moderate uh, our meetings so that we can maintain order um, and follow parliamentary procedures, but your exchange of thoughts and ideas and our administrator uh, coming in and chiming in, our, our, our attorneys, and everybody interacting, it was a well-oiled machine, and I certainly want to commend us uh, for hearing our citizens and oftentimes when they think we're not hearing or that we have selected hearing or that we're just totally deaf, um, I think the process worked this morning. Um, the issue that we will not be able to deal with is all of the misinformation that is sometime um, put out there and publicized. We, we really don't have the time to, to chase it all down, but I think that if we will continue what we've done here today, engaging in healthy and elaborate debate. Our citizens at least will know that we are all uh, having to be partakers of whatever legislation that passes up here. It's not like there is a rule of exception or an exemption that's there. So thank you uh, so much. I really felt good about how the process worked. And at the end of the day, I hope our citizens really recognize that we do work hard. Uh, to try to move us forward as a progressive community. So thank you for that. Also, I'm very pleased that when I drive uh, through East Putnam or East Palatka at night, um, we can see better. The street lights are activated um, over on the uh, east side of the river, and uh, it certainly looked like we were in the city before we get in the city. As a matter of fact, I think, Mr. Leary, the lights are brighter in East Palatka. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, um, again, uh, commissioners, be reminded that uh, we will convene as part of the Transportation Committee at 2 o'clock today in the conference room, Suite 200 uh, there. And at this time, we entertain a motion for recess. So moved. Okay. Second. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> that was a good meeting today. <laughs>